But if he doesn't feel comfortable, obviously with the communication barrier, we could, we were not able to talk properly together. Yeah, that's also a huge mm. thing. Um, I can understand how he felt. I can also. What I can say about my side is obviously I wish that he would have learned German so I can talk with him more intense about anything else inside of the game, outside of the game, hang with each other out of the out of the game and stuff like that. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. So I, obviously, I I really appreciate the hard work that he tried to do it. It's not nothing nothing easy. It's not easy said and done. Yeah, it's mm. really, really hard language. Add some fun to your space with Extrify, designed in Sweden with focus on quality products built on experience. You're looking at Project 4. There are four generation of products with super cool colorways to stand out, with matching sets to satisfy with a solid B4 bungee, lightweight ergonomic M4 mouse, the K4 keyboard is fantastic, all of which are performance focused, and finish it off with colorful GP4 mouse mats that are bold in design and smooth on the surface. The retro theme in particular has got the feels. Complete your setup with Extrify. No regrets, guaranteed. Go to the teammates. I want to see you fall and fast. Win the round. Win the game. Parry match. Your esports teammate. Hey buddy, let me show you how to fix that. Bitskins.com. Buy and sell skins instantly. Deposit and withdraw funds instantly with crypto or directly to your Visa card. Bitskins.com. The best skin marketplace. Extra TV confirmed episode 51. Shout out to our wonderful sponsors, Extrafy. That's Extrafy, X T R F Y dot com. We're in a uh, lovely pair of their headphones right now. Thank you, Lucas, for sending those over. We have Parry Match. That's parrymatch.com. Make sure you gamble responsibly. And uh, last but not least is Bitskins, bitskins.com. Buy, sell, and trade skins. Uh, I'd like some knocks and uh, maybe a new Karambit knife for Christmas if anybody's paying attention. Hashtag full time streamer. Knocks? He's think... uh, he's available for for a loan from NIP if you want. So okay, all right. Yeah. I, mean, I think they're going to give him pretty cheap just so they don't have to pay him. So it's it's going to be good. <laughs> all right, he's almost free. Okay, uh, we'll see how long we'll talk about that tonight. Uh, also, guys, uh, last week's show shit blew up. It was it was a mess, right? It, it was fun in a bad way. Striker's power was out. Then we needed an emergency guest. Smoothie came on last minute. Smoothie is here. He's chatting shit as usual. Then my shit scuffed up. It blew up. The mic fucking combusted into flames and I tilted off the face of the earth. Milan came back, right? And then Smuya, well, he stuffed his face with McDonald's. So last week, either one to remember or one to forget, you guys can make the choice. I, I, I really don't mind. Either way, if you're happy with it, yeah. If you're not, whatever. We're here again, episode 51. Lucas, do you feel there's a better vibe for the technological side of things this evening? I don't know. Like, everything's working. Okay. Fantastic. It's great when there's so much confidence coming out of the control room. You really love it. It sets everybody up with confidence. Striker, rumor has it, after last week's calamity, Martin sent you a gasoline-powered generator to make sure that doesn't happen again. Can you confirm or deny? Uh, I can't confirm nor deny. Okay. All right. Well, if we hear some loud noises out the background, we, we'll know what's happened. Prof, you're fine. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, to be that? honest, like it's it's just Martin didn't send him that. I'm just gonna lay it out. It was just like a bunch of hamsters and a bunch of hamster wheels connected to a power supply that's just gonna run it because that's that's more like Martin's Martin's down Martin's alley. He's also be more expensive. Yeah. You need the food for them, right? Yeah, but only for the time. Yeah, you need to keep them living. Yeah, like until, until the power sir, the power outage comes. So. They're gonna breed. It's gonna be a whole fucking problem. All right. Lucas, I want you to bring this link up before we do the like the intro intro to get things underway because I wanted I, I just need to get Prof's opinion on this because I know Prof is a massive fan of um, the the abusers, right? There's a bunch of abusers out there. There's orp abusers, you know. I've seen the one that that Peter brought up into the chat the other day was fantastic. The crosshair placement abusers. Now, yes. uh, me 
taking a screen grab of a thread on Reddit has now bled over uh, on Hadro TV has now bled over onto Reddit. Prof, what is going on? I'm not really sure. Uh, 70 comments, 220 upvotes for literally a screenshot. And you're, I don't know what's going on. Like, well, I was I'm amens good. as well. I didn't even say anything. I guess, I guess people just hate Mirage abusers. I think that's like the meta that's going on right now. People are united. The fronts are united on HLTV, on Reddit to fight this plague, which are people that just play Mirage all the time. Like, even I, as someone that is, uh, I would say, a Mirage connoisseur, uh, <laughs> I'd like to play some other maps from time to time. You know, you want to play some overpass, let's say. Okay. Uh, but it's impossible because you get Mirage or maybe you get Inferno in the in the second case, right? So okay. uh, we have united. The world has come together as it has never come before. And it's uh, beautiful to see. All right. Striker, are you more upset by the Mirage abusers or the uh, low sense abusers? I'm like in the camp of people who actually like to play Mirage, so I, they, uh, that's uh, it's uh, not something I'm I'm actually uh, too bothered by. What was the other one? Uh, low sense abusers. Oh, I'm also a high sense user, so let's let's go with that. Okay, all I'm right. Like well, three point five, I'm like four four hundred DPI, three point five. So fair enough. Well, uh, look, I, I want to make sure we give the people at home what they expected. Now, a lot of people tuned in. They saw the lovely graphics. They saw Tabson's face all over it. Tabson, he's not here right now but he will be at 9 p.m., right? we got the hot seat tonight with Tabson from Big, so stick around for that. We're going to go over the recent news, EPL Group A and B so far, Group C and D to come, and whatever the hell is left in the playtime, uh, we're going to talk a bit about Eternal Fire and uh, you know your questions at home. Now, just quickly, before we throw to the bumper and get into the recent news, if you want to listen to the podcast while you're on the bus, maybe you're not on the bus a lot these days, while you're out walking, maybe you're in the gym, maybe you're taking a dump, if you head over to anchor.fm slash hltv you can get the podcast on a bunch of different platforms apple podcasts google podcasts spotify all that shit all right that's for your audio listeners if you want to get involved in that way so lucas roll the bumper and let's get into the recent news Right, we are back. And uh, look, we've got some stuff to sink our teeth into here this evening before Tabson joins the show. And this is probably good because there's uh, quite a bit of chunky news, especially with that E6 stuff that's come out. We just had that Furia news drop as well. So some stuff just to kind of breeze through here. But uh, this Zipex news has, has come out, right? Obviously, before EPL kicked off, they kept it, as Australis do, uh, under wraps until the final moments. And, and we were kind of led to believe, or at least I, I think the fact that they were boot camping together with the six of them, um in in copenhagen it made it seem like they were going to run a six-man roster or, or strike am i the only one who had that opinion what did you think i definitely i wasn't sure what to think of it considering they left it until the start of their match was because when they did that did that previously that was basically when they had that switching situation right when they like they did it based on maps and that kind of makes sense right like you can't really announce what your lineup is going to be until you know the maps so that's kind of like almost what i was thinking but then again it's astralis they kind of like they just want to keep people guessing and it, it which is obviously annoying for for people like us who just want to know what the what the fuck is happening in that team right so yeah i i just knowing astralis i just wasn't sure what to expect at all i was like just like expecting everything at that point yeah what were you thinking about it prof did you think the six man option or no or did you think they were going to do something drastic like this yeah i think we, we, when you left the show last time we were talking about it and we had like a lot of special I, I thought it was going to be either either like a ease in for this tournament where he maybe you get lucky to practice a couple of maps and then you try them on those maps and then long term you you swap someone out but we really couldn't figure out like which player it would be that was going to be removed i think we kind of figured out like glaive and bobski aren't going to be the ones on the chopping block because of the contract situation and then the other three all have like a lot of a lot of things going well for them like zipnix had his best tournaments back in in Cologne. like he was the best from australis at that tournament mm. had a good tournament so that was going his way i think I said Dupree was the best player on the team and he was best rated in, in Pro League so far. So I was actually maybe thinking maybe it was going to be bad just as a temporary thing that, that was going to be put on the sidelines because it just made more sense maybe role-wise. But but it seems like it's uh, Zipnix and it seems like it's going to be like what they're sticking with. But even though I'm not sure, it doesn't mean just because this happened at EPL that they're not going to change for the next tournament, right? They have oh. Blast, Blast coming up next. It's going to get interesting as well with the RMRs, though, right? Who did they have? Yeah. Play? It was it was Esther Tag who played with them in the last batch of RMRs, right? So if Zipex is now out, no Esther Tag. No, it wasn't Esther Tag. No, he played. No, they played the first one. Played. 
the Europe, the, we've already had a European RMR this year. As yeah. tag is last year's news, man. Oh, we had, Jesus Christ. We had just... Bob, oh, wait. Well, uh, this is Flashpoint, Yeah, you're right. right. Cloud9. Holy shit. I just went in like a time machine. So who did they I'm play this year? I'm trying to figure year? out when Flashpoint ended because like, I just, I just am trying to remember if uh, Device was still there or not. I don't not, know if he was not there. The Device switched, swapped it before, right? That was kind of the part of the... Part of the intro Flashpoint had the anime thing, right? I think oh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You're they were right, like they had right, the right, Kings, right? right? So Bubsky did play. So it's just yeah. going to be Zipex out and Lucky yeah. in. So they're still right. going to take a hit on points there. Yeah. I, I was I was typing in our Discord the other night, right? And and I um I you know was doing some Wim Hof breathing in the shower and you know the ice baths and all that. So I was, the endorphins were released and I was kind of seeing the world in like a, a in like a retrospective way and. Astralis kind of fucked himself with the six man thing, like from from my musings that night, right? Because you take yourself back to last year with the snappy situation, the Yugi situation. Sure, they were more temporary, right? But bringing Bubski in, he was never a direct replacement for anybody in the team other than say uh, Magisk or Dupree, right? If we think yeah. about roles. So then how that extended and compounded for them is then they had the S attack situation. Uh, then they had like the flip flopping back and forth, and they were look. They were trying to shop around towards the, the middle to tail end of last year and sell either Zipex, Esetag, or Bubsky. They were trying to sell one of the three, and they just ended up selling Esetag out of the three, right? So like, what they're kind of left with now, I can understand why they're picking Bubsky and, and bringing Lucky in with Glaive signed on this longer deal. That's future-proofing, right? But it's like they had Bubsky in the team now for over a year, and they've only started integrating him this year, and he's not... In the system at all so now they're having to make a whole new system or i don't who even knows if they're going to work on a whole new system because the rumor is right that uh magisk zonic dupree some of them might be gone at the end of the year as well so it's like astralis are going to slowly just <sighs> disappear right like they're gonna they're gonna rebuild at some point right but it, it kind of seems like it's gonna suck for a while or is that, yeah. is that just me thinking i mean that? You have to think about it from like to that. That is definitely a valid concern. That's something that I was thinking about as well. It just feels like the team is in flux, and you don't really know who's going to be on the team in, in six months. At the same time, like this team, like these six players are probably going to be the players that they have for the next RMR and the major, which we mm -hmm. presume they're going to qualify for. And I think all of these players are going to try to do their best to like have a good major. I don't think they're just going to okay, fuck it. You know, let's just fuck around well, because they have champs for most of them. Yeah, right? so. they have they have half a year to give their best shot with this team, and then after that, what happens happens, right? It doesn't. Who knows what's going to be on the table at that point? And as well, like even if Dupree, let's say, wants to leave, he can just be shit for three months, four or five months because no, uh, things change quite quickly. Like even though he's the pre four time major winner and all, all of that shit, he still needs to have decent recent form in order to attract uh another a new team right can, can we do can, yeah sorry go for a strike no i think it's just crazy considering if you think back to when this started like this is somewhere like my may last year or something like yeah. that so we're way over way over a year that year this has started happening say. essentially yeah and since that time i think like the longest that they went without a change or without some sort of a flux was like three months when Glaive and Zipex came back at the end of the last year, essentially. Like, that was, like, the only time. And even then, I think there was, like, some time when Zipex didn't play Nuke and stuff like that. So I don't even know how, how what the longest period where they stayed in one lineup was. Mm. And if you consider that this is the fucking team that remained the exact same for the two, how long, two years and something, some a little bit on top before that, it's kind of crazy to think that, like, they've literally gone 15 months almost, like, constantly having some sort of a change going on in the team. So... Like yeah, like you're saying, like this, they just kind of shot themselves in the foot uh, since they since they started doing this. I think it shows in their gameplay as well, right? Like if we think about Cologne, the way that they were winning right. those games was like individual things. It's not what we remember for Astralis, and we would always talk about Astralis as a team that gave the blueprint to everybody else of how to kind of approach the game and set everything up and take it to that next level. And now they don't even have a base anymore. It doesn't feel like right. So uh, I, I want to kind of we'll grab this and we'll check back in in six months. Maybe some people will remember, but just just go with me for a second here i think from the players that we have in the team now glaive lucky and bubsky in six months time let's say start of 2022 will be the only three who are currently still going to be in the team right hmm. but imagine this right it doesn't now, have to be but it's likely that it they feels change, that right? way right yeah now let's say complexity who have just added s attack and we're going to talk about complexity next so they're getting more and more danish right 
Esetag, he's kind of your glue man, right? But he can orp as well. So like, let's say he leans maybe into the orping stuff a little bit more later in the year. Let's say, just say, just stay with me. Blame, we know he's the hard lurk. We know he, the, the in-game leader, this, that, and the other. Config, quite an aggressive rifler, but he can do it all secondary orping, this, that, and the other. They bring in Magisk and they bring in Dupree. And now that's complexity, right? That that seems pretty fucking tidy. It seems pretty nice. It seems like it, it, it could work, right? You can have like Config Magisk reunited back from the Dignitas days. You get Esetag in there doing some orping. I, I don't know. What do you, do you think? There's any chance of that, or what? Are, what are we? What are we feeling? Am I, I mean, am I just speculating wildly? Uh, I don't think it's uh, like that much of a wild speculation, to be honest. Like it just seems like a perfect fit, right? Like either for some of complexity players to kind of filling the gaps in Astralis or the other way around. Like that's basically like how it has to go for uh, for the, the Dan- like for the team for one of the teams at least to stay Danish, right? So I I, I think. That's essentially like what it kind of hinges on at this point, where like Astralis probably don't really know yet if if they're going to be able to get from somebody from complexity or the other way around. So that they're basically waiting until something happens, and that's probably gonna, what's going to decide it all, right? So like I think it makes perfect sense. Like it's like the it's basically like the only two teams, assuming heroic doesn't just like fall off the cliff and mm-hmm. and have to change again. Like it's the only two teams that can kind of mix in that that are Danish at this point and are still interesting players. You know, if you disregard the the whole MSL team who's like let's be real here like they just don't have players that these two teams would be interested in too much almost feels like one of the old school French shuffles in like 2015 16 right, right? you with, have yeah, two yeah, teams yeah. which are like somewhere around there maybe one is a bit worse but maybe the has more more money or more willing, willing to spend, to spend yeah. right at the, at the given moment or maybe has like this team has like a bit of better recent results this player is kind of uptick in form and these things will kind of decide like back in the day it was always like nbk <laughs> that kind of framed which team was the was the number one almost uh so i don't know who is going to decide it in, in this case and how it's going to be decided but it's going to be something to definitely keep an eye out for yeah, I guess this also depends how Config's recovery goes. So we can kind of get into this complexity news now. For those who missed it, Config injured himself and had to have surgery. Uh, he was meant to be boot camping with the team in Serbia. Um, but since injuring himself, that can no longer be the case. I believe he's out for four to six weeks. And that's just the recovery time, right? There's going to have to be rehab and all of that before really getting somebody back in. And uh, it, it was a pretty bad injury, if I understand correctly, right? Yep. Someone, someone yep. just wrote in chat, Config broke his wrist while assigning for Astralis. And I just <laughs> yeah, I've, I've found heard that, that before. Quick enough. It's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, it, seems like, it seems pretty serious because he has like metal rods in his arm okay, and his, uh, wrist that just has to have to keep it in place. And it, he's only going to get those out in like three or four weeks or something like that was said. It's probably after there's still going to be There's still going to be rehab after that. So there's very like, it's, it's high likelihood that he's not going to be able to come back in that one month. It's just like the lowest amount of time i'm I'm guessing and it's yeah. just going to be probably way more than that because i don't imagine that your hand is just going to be automatically all fine once they take those rods out i imagine it's just going to take a while too yeah for for the rehabilitation so yeah i don't think i don't think complexity are getting out of this for for months no complexity are fucked right so for those of you who uh who missed it right that ever since obo left then the whole jks situation but they've had Yugi stand in, Otto stand in, NATO stand in. Now they have NATO Kita, standing in again. Kita also. Oh, they had Kita as well. So they they have been cooked, right? Like the 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 peacemaker situation with him coming into coach and then Esa tag coming in as the new fifth. You know, maybe maybe you think they change up the way that they're approaching the game. You, you know, they make JKS and blame be a little bit more aggressive on their T sides when necessary. The CT sides, you could probably argue that things were like could work because that's where there's less of that role overlap. Maybe they, you know, come up with a couple of new players in the playbook. They're reinvigorated off some holiday time. But now it's like, just fuck it. Like, can we can we just forget? Can they just forget about the last year and a half? Well, it's going to be basically, yeah, it is going to be a year and a half by the end of the year, right? Before yeah. Config comes back. And at that point, like, I'm already speculating about the team just going full Danish, right? So uh, we're going to talk about EPL soon. But I have absolutely no faith, right? This This thing with NATO coming in, if it was replacing Esetag, I would even argue JKS, let's say they wanted him to come in and do like a bit more passive orping for poison. Any of those three, fine. But for config, like are we like like, like have, have you right? noticed how they have you, have you been paying, have you been paying attention to like how they solved it? Because Blamef looked like reasonably more aggressive 
and NATO wasn't exactly used as like a, a like as like an entry. So I feel like they've kind of accommodated the team a little bit differently. But yeah. I, I just didn't pay enough attention to it to kind of like tell what the actual changes are. But and I is. also just don't have a good memory of like where the players play all the time and stuff like that. So uh, it's just something that uh, I think should be kept an eye on. It's just hard to take anything from it right at the moment. But I guess it is going to be a kind of long term ish thing. Right? Are they going to keep NATO for until config is ready to come back? Like those are questions that we're not really going to have an answer to because I mean, complexity the, I, are kind of fucked in terms of the major anyway, aren't they? Uh, uh, not completely. To... I just opened it now. Uh, they currently are tenth and have five hundred sixty points. That is seven hundred minus twenty percent for minus rush plus asset tag. But they could technically not get double penalized because this could be minus rush plus NATO. No. No, wait, the no, no. Out as well. Yeah, that's oh, two that's players. Yeah. Two. yeah, yeah. So that's gonna be yeah. So they're gonna lose even more points, which could let me just see. Is that gonna drop them? I don't think that's gonna drop them out of the invites. I think they're gonna be like invited to a closed qualifier or okay. like the, the RMR at least. I mean, I'm directly. pretty sure everybody kind of gets uh, at least to the to to the closed qualifiers gets at least like some sort of a step up who already has yeah. some points in their RMR. So there should be. At least they're gonna have a decent chance to qualify for the main event, which yeah. is gonna have fucking twenty four teams apparently. So yeah, but so the problem is like even yeah they they play fall the fall IRMR and they do like decent and then they again need to change a player because okay. they want to bring back config for the major. Let's say in theory, then they again lose points that could <laughs> send them like below the line of qualifying. Well, they're not gonna do that if that's gonna happen. So there yeah, you go. yeah, I know, but, but just like. That's even worse than they're going to play with the worst player just to be there. But which... we're already in the last week of August, right? So then yep. you have four more weeks in September. Then the major starts in, November. let's just say, four more weeks after that. So Confix is was four to six weeks of being out, right? We're talking nine weeks from now, right? Yeah, it so... seems like he's going to be out until the end, 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 end of the major. Yeah, like I'm not an expert in terms of wrist injuries, and but just the fact that you said he has rods in there, and, and yeah. he's now not going to be able to do anything with that hand, right? The muscles are going to get weaker. Everything's going to... You, you guys know how it happens when you get a cast and shit. Everything starts to to, to fall apart. So Not if, only COVID experts, also just like medical... We're just doctors. <laughs> yeah. We just know what we're talking about, you know? Exactly. Don't fucking question our authority, all right? Take it as gospel. <laughs> We know what we're talking about here. It's right. this is a but, professional podcast. Right. Okay, look at the microphones. We've all got good microphones now. Matching we are, we're matching for the first time. In look forever. at this shit. You guys don't get this anywhere else, all right? So this is this is as legit as it gets. But one on the thing, scale of one to ten striker, how fucked the complexity? Um about a seven, I would yeah. say. I'd say pretty fucked, but you know, seven. not yeah, it's like a it, I'm definitely edging towards fucked, but it's not terrible, you know. It's it's still kind of like a way where they can qualify for the major and and that kind of puts them in a not completely fucked uh group i guess uh -huh. but what i'm what i wanted to say about this is uh i don't think they're going to keep nato for the entire time i mean there's definitely a chance because they've done it before but like they obviously aren't going to plan on using him uh for the long term right so i would imagine if somebody opens up if something opens up in that time somebody maybe uh gets give me a name uh, Cold I'll Zero. take any name. Cold, Cold Zero is a possibility, even though it, it doesn't work. Help. Cold Zero. It doesn't JKS. work. He, 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 just, he just pulled it out, <laughs> just out of his sleeve. Hey. So you you asked me to pull out a name. I'm just that, I'm just telling you that that's one name that's gonna be <laughs> that, free probably name. soon. You're right. It is a name. It's definitely a name. It's a name. Okay. And Neil then what we do is we replace team, S attack with Get with Right, and we bring Hiko in yeah. to replace fucking <laughs> Poison. <laughs> And everyone baits Wilson's, everyone, and no one communicates. Who else is kind of out of a team at this point? Uh, I'm trying to trying to work it out. Guardian. Yeah, that's not going to work either. <laughs> it's okay, can we move on? Guardian uh, Zira. There, but there is also there is also a chance they could they could just bring back Rush to to play. That could also help them with the RMRs because right. that was also what that was actually what I was thinking. If they bring back Rush instead of NATO, then they could uh, kind of right. There kinda, was, would only be one change. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, got it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's going to happen just because they, they haven't done <laughs> yeah. He has a team, essentially, so that doesn't even fit. We're just, we're just saying, like, <laughs> lurker, just look at his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just say any name at this point. Okay. With the yeah, biggest exactly. op -bater that we can get. Um, junior? Simple, simple, apparently. Yeah, okay. through asset yep. forms. Yep. Orp abuser. All right. Um, let's, let's, let's move forward. 
Let's uh, talk about IEM Fall because I'm sure. By the way, be... uh, maybe we can talk about Furia now because I didn't put it on the uh, thing because it just happened. Okay. Uh, if we want, we can just throw it in now when we're talking about teams. Give us the run. Uh, by F, I don't know. They replaced one guy from Academy with another guy from Academy who is called Drop. I think he's 17. And uh, maybe he drops Glocks. Maybe he doesn't. We don't know about that yet. He doesn't op. He he's isn't not an opper. Yeah. He's not an opper. He had like a decent rating, one of the better players in in the academy, and uh, that's it. That's it from my knowledge about. I him. watched one of those academy games, and I think it was a Vertigo, and he he was looking good. I think. Yeah. Um. I don't have. Look, Honda just didn't feel like it. I don't know if you guys agree. Yeah, no. he, just, he didn't feel like it. No mm -hmm. loss there. Definitely on the on the removal side. So yeah, I guess. But th there is also this whole thing that they kind of missed the deadline for sub for Pro League. Up, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Striker did some research on that, so maybe you, you can share. So I don't oh. want to steal your work. Yeah. It's not a research, it's just uh, the rules. It's just, it's just what the rules are, yeah, for EPL. Essentially, like, the, the, the transfer deadline for EPL was the day before the first matches, so August 15, yeah. before, the, before the group. It's not even, like, uh, separated by groups. It's literally just before the start of the entire tournament. Okay. So the day before the transfer deadline. And after that ends... Uh, the only thing they can do is an emergency transfer if they don't already have like a replacement in their in their official lineup. And he's what does not, that mean? Well, basically, like let's say somebody gets injured, right, from your team. Maybe then then you can use an emergency emergency transfer. Yeah, something like that, obviously. Yep. And I think they use that for. I'm not sure if they. No, no, no. They actually uh, NATO actually made it through on the last day, I think, of the of the transfer that like the transfer window or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But essentially, like considering this is not um an emergency for furia they definitely uh, I, it doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with honda or 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 that they just don't want to uh, it's just that they don't want to play with him right so i assume they're not going to be granted this this transfer that's at least my my uh, read on the situation so i guess they're either going to have to fly honda in because apparently a drop is already with them in poland and honda isn't or they're going to have to play with gary because those are the only other players on the uh, on their official lineup for pro league all right one second uh, Mihal Slavitsky, this is Chad Virtual here, just leaving you a voice message. <laughs> uh, currently live on HLTV Confirmed. Wanted to get the insight from you, uh, League Ops over there at ESL, fucking champ of Human 2, on what's going on with Furia. Will Drop be allowed to play? And what would the ruling be? We'll get back to that later. Thank you very much, Mihal. If you have time to answer this question, thank you and good night. Pretty, we'll sure, this is not his, pretty sure this is not necessarily his decision. Oh. It's the, it should be the League Commissioner. Yeah, but he would be in conversation with Nair. So yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm they'll sure. already know. They'll, they'll yeah, but I mean, this this ruling was introduced for emergencies. That's why it's called an emergency transfer, right? Which this does, just doesn't seem like. So unless you know, there's something that we just don't know. But it just there's nothing uh, pointing to to this being an emergency. Really? So, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry. That's Let's it. Finish. That's that's pretty much it. It really just depends on how you quantify emergency. Maybe like this player is really bad. We want a better one. We can't play we can't win any games with this guy. Please give us give us a transfer. So maybe that works. I don't know how that's an emergency, uh, yeah. huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I no, guess that's one. that's it with the Fury news. It would be interesting to see if he's not an Orpa, what they do with the team, because we maybe art won't be high progressive anymore. That's probably not likely. But we'll wait and see. Uh, you don't have to wait too long. First of September, their first game will be at uh, 445 PM. You guys know where to check all that action out. Let's move into the IEM fall announcement. And it really did just feel like an absolute bloody lifetime. Lucas, bring this one up for everybody at home for this announcement coming out. Now, um, I heard some information that maybe it was being held up with the back and forth between uh, one of the parties and the other big party. So that would be ESL and, and Volvo. So uh, eventually it got announced and it kind of just like, I see the, the tier three, tier two guys, oh, open qualifier in two weeks. Lucky we didn't have anything planned. It's like, come on, fucking hell. Guys. I mean, two like, weeks is pretty nice. That's fine. Be, like, that's not bad at all. Compared yeah. to how it no normally is, I think, aren't they? I didn't see anyone complaining. Did you just make this up? Or no, what? I saw like one or two tweets. Uh, I, I saw yeah. one or two didn't tweets. Didn't happen. All right. Uh, I, I have a reply from Mihao, but uh, what do we got? It's nothing that we can talk about on stream. So there yeah. you go. So we, we, we have to wait and see. We have to wait and see what happens. So um, yeah. That's a, that's a wait and see one right there, guys. I don't have any official information. I tried to flex my big dick and it, it didn't work. But anyway, 
Uh, yeah, I did see some tweets. I swear I saw some. You know, and, maybe I mean, it was like an Asilian of the world, you know, someone around like that. Yeah, I mean, like, to a degree, like, you understand, right? Like, they, these guys just have, like, a lot of stuff kind of planned quite a lot ahead of time. Like, at least a couple of months, maybe, they have, like, some invites to some tournaments. And there's, like, a bunch of these Tier 2 tournaments that they wanted to probably play in. And now they possibly couldn't because, like, some of the qualifiers probably overlap, right? So, like, yeah, sure, I understand. But this is like we're in an open circuit like these stuff these things are just going to happen especially with the rmrs like this is very hard to plan a lot ahead of, a lot ahead of time so mm. i it's just something that you have to deal with that's it i think one of the things in halvor mr vendetta uh, coach of dignitas is in the chat here and uh he was mentioning that you know it's going to be a bit wonky that some regions have more rmrs than others and i think that really just comes down to the climate we're in kind of similar to what yep. you were just alluding to there striker is the fact that it, this is difficult at the best of times at the moment, right? And I think that's probably the same thing here. And the fact that we are only getting the European event on LAN, I, I, I think I, that's I, the most that's the most worrying part for me. But you, like, why the, so? The, yeah, why? Because Actually, great question. Because Europe is the only one who's not going to have a problem entering Europe, uh, European <laughs> Union for no. Yeah, 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 yeah. why do you think I know this sounds stupid, but that's obviously <laughs> that's like the logic, right? Like you'd want everybody else to be online because then they can get visas for the RMR and stuff like that, get into the country already, and it's not going to be a problem for the major. Right. Um, imagine that's this the though, point. right? I get what you're saying. I get what you're trying to build there, but we already know that's going to be super difficult. Like getting teams yeah. out of China, getting teams out of Australia, yeah, uh, yes. getting teams out of South America if they're not, you know, an MIBR or a Furia or But did you expect the RMRs to all happen in Europe? I didn't expect that. I think that was the plan. <laughs> I thought they were gonna happen in their own regions. And I mean, from my like my point of view, the land needs to happen in Europe mostly for like European health and safety protocols so you can test out those things right i think that was from my point of view a kind of a big important part of why you needed the land uh because like it doesn't matter if in one country in the world you can't really have lands if you can have them in europe yeah. or in a specific country in europe mm. so i think you need to cover that base uh, primarily i didn't really expect other teams to, to travel to europe but but yeah one of the issues is that between the between the last RMR and the major, it's very little time. Uh, I think even less than we had before for majors. It's 13 days? It's actually uh, not that bad for like the key regions, which is mainly CIS. And I think Asia has uh, has the RMRs ending on the 5th. And so they have like three weeks instead of two. Okay. Yeah. So like it's better for the bad bad regions that, you know, are going to probably have encounter issues, some yeah. difficulties with, with visas. So at least uh, the key regions will have a little bit more time. Yeah, yeah but I think with, with COVID, it's going to be even more difficult yeah that, that's what i'm kind i mean of with this of. yeah sure but this news that came out of uh, came out of sweden at least it seems like there's going to be some um yeah like meeting halfway uh, from from the swedish authorities and stuff like that so it's probably going to be easier than it would have been had it not come True, through yeah. uh, with the with the allowance of esports esports uh, competitions to be whatever uh, included in the list of whatever they call it like the the elite sports competitions or whatever it is right so uh, that's that I assume is at least going to be something that helps. Yeah, that's like one hurdle, right? I think the other yeah. hurdle, as you guys are also talking about, is getting certain teams out. For example, if things stay out as they are in Australia, Renegades aren't getting out. Yeah. They're not getting out. Like things in Oz right now are just, it's just fuck. Oh, guys, I don't even want to talk about it, but uh, they're not getting out. They're just they're not. expert. <laughs> it's, no, like it's 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 all going a bit mental down under at the moment. So um, I, I don't feel like they would be able to get out of the country. Like I mentioned before, with some of the teams from Asia, like you always know there's, there's extra loopholes there. Same with South America. CIS, we already saw the issues with that around Cologne, right? And, and any of these snap situations could happen just like that. They could just yeah. happen, right? So um, we are getting I closer guess, and closer. Yeah, you know? if, they, if they get the visas in time, like, let's say if they get them a week after they qualify, I think a lot of teams will just go as soon as they can for a boot camp or whatever and just get there while they know the rules uh, yeah. for like, you know, COVID regulations, whatever, uh, and just hang out in Sweden if it's going to happen in Sweden. If it doesn't happen in Sweden, it's going to be in Romania and that's it. I guess in Romania, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I, I think it's still, I don't know. I think it's up in the air between stockholm and 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 the fuck the streets louder there i saw everybody uh between stockholm and and romania right i don't know when when was the second deadline striker uh second deadline for what sorry 
for uh, um, PGL to decide? Was it? It was uh, in. Uh, uh, it was uh, September fifteenth. I think okay. was the was the September thirteenth or fifteenth. Some uh, that's one, not far one away. Two. That's pretty close, right? That's only like about two two and a bit weeks from now. So we're not too far away from that at all. So I guess we're going to find out pretty quick. Um, but yeah, September fifteenth. So yeah, okay. Twenty four teams on land as well for the European one. I guess that could help because I would say the European teams, if say Renegades can't make it, are going to be the ones filling those voids, right? Yeah. Like because we're still going to, if the major can happen, it's going to happen. If Renegades can't come, Renegades can't come, right? They're not just going to leave that. We're not going to cancel. The, we're not going to cancel the major because Renegades can't, can't come. I hope we don't cancel the major because Renegades can't come. That would be, uh, that'd be very, I mean, I would, wouldn't it? but okay. Oh yeah. You're that no. much of a fan. <laughs> no, <Nah, I'm> not. <laughs> I might have, uh, yeah. it would, we need it, it would be, it would be, it'd be sad, but what, what do you know? I have no idea what's going on down there. Yeah. It's fucked. Okay, are we done with the RMR chat for now? I'm sure I we guess so. Yeah, a bit yeah. So when we get so. to the event, I um, mean, this... just to just yeah. to address like what uh, you were talking about with uh, other regions having more like some regions, it's just CIS and South America, as far as I remember. That's going to have three instead of two. Mm. Everybody else is just going to have two. The thing is, sure, like it would have been nicer to have more just for like the consistency, you know, for to see who's who, which teams are actually best um, like across more events and not just you know basically one. That's just going to have so many points on offer that if you do reasonably well, you're just going to qualify even if you have zero points at this point. So, uh, it, like, it doesn't really matter because the the regions don't really intersect. So it, it's it's like only within one region that's uh, this is going to matter. So if it's two or three, it doesn't yeah, it doesn't make a big big difference to me. So I, I think with the um, the state of Counter Strike at the moment, it would have been nice to get the CIS RMI just because of how competitive it is. Like, I just think from a from a spectator standpoint, yeah, like yeah. having all those big teams. Uh, going toe to toe on land regionally, when we know how funny, or funny is probably the wrong word, how interesting uh, the domestic games can get. Like I think that would have been cool, right? Um, but yeah, we we don't get it. Whatever. We we're, we're th this is the way we kind of have to operate at the moment. Is like, well, yeah, uh, it's better than nothing. Like that's kind of the world at the moment, right? I feel so unfortunate. But uh, yeah, let's look into the next piece of news, which is Mad Lions signing Bo Rap. Now, this is. This is interesting, right? Because Burrup was meant to be on MSL's team with, with Fessor and According AZ. to some some reports, yeah. But that, then again, nobody's really actually like confirmed this team to be to be that lineup, but possibly, yeah. So okay. I, I guess with that whole MSL MSL situation, we thought maybe something would come out considering the player break had ended, right? Like that that there would be some conversation around it. But at the same time, is there been a whole lot, even if MSL did have a team for them to compete MSL, in? MSL yeah? uh, did make a big announcement today. I don't know if, so, if you saw oh, it. Oh, I missed it. No. You're on Instagram, right? Yes, uh, I am. He just bought a house. Oh. oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> ah. I, I didn't was, know how. I was like, how the fuck would I have missed the big announcement? That I actually saw it, though. <laughs> yeah, actually, did you hey, right? Uh, it looks nice. Uh, so maybe he was busy with that, so he lost Borup in the, in the meanwhile. But uh, w the thing that I find kind of funny is that Mad Lions sold off two of their players to Heroic, allegedly not really, not really like for a big buyout or anything. And they were pretty good players, and they sold other Danish players. And then they bought a Danish player from Heroic. He wasn't even a free transfer. I we don't know how much they paid. Maybe it could could be like five Probably bucks. Probably not like a lot. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but still, it is some sort of a buyout, which it just feels like weird decision making about the whole project. Uh, meanwhile, Regin also left. I don't know if we followed up on that he's not involved in the project it anymore. wasn't very like it wasn't made it was very, public right yeah it was very it yeah. like it what but, happened there i don't know i guess some like differences you know the classic uh, differences in opinions and views on the on the future of the team stuff something like that I but think cuban's that the, the coach cuban cuban is still the coach they have like five they of the of spellen spellen is also out and and that's it that's it so not much to report on Mad Lions generally. We didn't really see them. I don't even know where they're ranked anymore. No, uh, not far. Because it's also the player break happened. Number 61. So it's like, whatever. Okay, not that bad. Not really good either. Okay. All right. Let's leave Mad Lions because we got a lot to get through here. Tabs is going to be yep. with us in about 24 minutes. This ESIC news, you did the article today, uh, Striker. Do you want to give everybody at home a quick little rundown on this and the, and the key takeaways? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, the... Uh, if people remember like kind of like the leaked recording that came out somewhere at the beginning of April from um, one of those teams, um, a rebirth that uh, had a couple of players kind of like discussing 
fixing a match against one of the other teams in the SCM DL, right? That was a pretty big drama about five months ago. Now we finally got a re resolution on that. Two, two of those players got a five-year ban. The third one wasn't involved in like the key discussion where like it was clear that there was some um, that there was some foul play, right? So he kind of like got out, got off uh, almost easy. Obviously, you know, if there's no evidence, there's uh, there's no reason to to keep him banned, right? So he's basically only served like the four month ban, which was kind of like a suspension in the meantime while uh, Isik were kind of like investigating this issue, right? So um, he's already free to free to play while the other two players are banned for for five years. Were the other two guys still playing? Did they go to Valorant? Do we know anything about them? Or did they just kind of They played in a... I forgot the name of the, of the, uh, of the team, but the last the last matches they played on HLT was like March, I think. So, and I mean, they got suspended afterwards. So I imagine they just couldn't even. So I don't know what's happened to them since. Okay. Well, uh, I, I think the key takeaway from this was uh, towards the bottom of your article. And I grabbed that one and gave it a little bit of a, a retweet there. It's, it's the stuff about hunden uh which is going to come out on wednesday, wednesday. Yep. yeah so that right there i think is the one that people are going to be interested about it's good to see that uh we had that and that stuff come out from esic just a couple of days ago uh talking about the transparency i guess yep. what was the key with that um and now this hunden news is going to come out it feels like we're going to get uh just a shitload when it rains it pours yeah, they a bunch say. Of updates. yeah so this is going to be interesting the hunden one just to remind everybody striker what was what was that over uh what sorry the, oh, the the Hunden stuff, right? This was to do with um, the leaking of documents, right? right? If I remember right. Yeah, I mean Did... the 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 allegation is that uh, is that he shared sensitive information from the team strategy book with a competitor without the team's knowledge. That's kind of I think that's pretty much the direct uh, uh, direct quote on on what the claims are. So um, yeah, I mean Hunden claimed it was just anti strats heroic. Didn't necessarily this didn't necessarily deny that. Just saying that there was some sensitive information that he shared. With some competitors so uh, it's hard to say what exactly it is but uh, i imagine we're gonna learn a bit more on wednesday it's always weird yeah. when they get out there before it right prof when he's out there before it trying to set, set yeah the, set the i time. mean the, the whole thing is it's so annoying because we don't really know what exactly happened not even what exactly happened it's like super vague on both sides and like these quasi negations of what happened like oh i'm not gonna say anything you said is not correct. I'm just gonna say a bunch of different things. Yeah. And then you know how people act. Like this happens first. Everyone's like, "Oh, this is the truth." Then this happens. Oh no! Now this is the truth. And if this guy came out again, everyone would be like, "Oh no! This is actually the truth. This is amazing." And then this guy replies, and then you go forever. So at least maybe if that happened, we'd get a bit more information because at the moment I don't really actually know what the fuck happened. And allegedly, no one opened those documents. But how they know they didn't open them? Like all of this seems like super, like I don't know, CSI Miami hacking information. Like we checked everyone, no one accessed. How do you know no one accessed? Well, like, Google Docs. What, what don't they have the? Yeah, I don't know. They don't, don't have know. anything. They don't have anything. Also, like if someone wants to share it, the, the, I'm just so annoyed because if he wanted to share this privately, he could have just downloaded it and sent it yeah. on a fucking email or Telegram or WhatsApp or wherever. So it just feels so. It feels so stupid, but we'll, I guess we'll find out a bit more and we'll find out how stupid Hunden was in this case uh, that he got caught, right? Yeah, we'll see if he ends up on any billboards anytime soon. Probably not for getting <laughs> return, not for him, not, probably not for him returning to a team, maybe in like some bad press, I imagine. But uh, we'll keep our finger on the pulse of that one and we'll keep this one moving along here. We're going to talk about EPL groups A and B quite quickly. Let's do this on steroids. And if there's anything that we want to return to, maybe we can return to it with tabs. And so Heroic, uh, looking fucking bloody hot out the gates. Now, uh, right here, a little tagline, onliners or something else. Prof, I want to <laughs> handball this one to you. There you go. I set it up for myself. Okay, I know, but, but But if you read, if you... <laughs> If you read the comments, if you have Twitch chat opened when uh, Heroic is playing, at least at EPL, people are just saying, ah, classic online, online gods, cheaters, blah, blah, like cheaters. all the time. <laughs> Legit people just, just paying yeah, cheaters. Cheating. Yeah. Just cheating, obviously Guys, cheating. Yeah, of course. So that there is that is kind of the prevalent, not a prevalent, but like there's a strong uh, opinion in the fan base. I feel like that they're onliners uh, with some some evidence to maybe back that up like Refresh online is much better at the moment isn't he yeah but to be also... fair to be fair though he wasn't that great even before cologne he had yeah. a couple of okay. events that were pretty subpar so i think yeah i wouldn't put that on the the online versus line difference i'd say he just had a poor run of form man had a break and he's back right okay but i think i think there is something like 
from my opinion, when I watch them now, they were again kind of similarly clutch as they were uh, back online, like clutch as a team mm-hmm. in those, you know, two v two, three v threes, late late in the game, thirteen thirteens. Like they they beat ends sixteen fourteen, sixteen fourteen. That game against uh, Vitality was also 13, their thirteen with the Kane yeah, clutch. Yeah, they made it back on on Inferno from like I don't know. 13 9 or something like yep. that they made a comeback so those are the features that they lacked on land for me so i think i think there is something to it like i'm not saying oh they're on liners as in they're never going to be good on land mm. but their land level was not the same as online yeah well i think we always thought there might be a little bit of like input delay on how quick they could react because they're such a reactive team right yeah. they never seem to skip a beat um and also I'm not trying. I'm not trying to make excuses for them, other than Cadian and Stown. The other three don't have a huge amount of land experience, really. Like Refresh had that stand-in period, right? Where didn't he stand in for Cloud Nine at a Blast event or something? Yeah. If I remember rightly, but yeah, for testers, something with Optic, something with Fragsters back in the day, but not much. Yeah, yeah. like Tessus and Shush. Like Shush, sure. Like when he was playing um, in in the in the Mad Lions roster. Uh, and before that, with tricked, right? They were they were okay on the on the open circuit with with lands, but nothing of of the scale and pressure of the big boy land like a, a Cologne, right? So obviously there was no crowd there. But look, I'm not trying to make excuses for them. I think um, the, the the disparity is there. But I just want to put this in perspective for people. What do you like? What the fuck do you want from them? Like this is the bit that I don't get. It's like yeah, sure, okay, you can call them online, you call them whatever the fuck you want. But well, you think they're just going to play and not try and win? Like. They're trying to win in both scenarios here. They're just winning more now when you're going to paint them with this brush. It's like, okay, like maybe they have to cop that, but this is, what do you want them to do about it? They played shit at LAN and now they're playing good online. Okay, yeah. well, they, I'm sure they would want to go back and play good at LAN. Like they're waiting <laughs> for the next LAN to play good. So like, let's see. Like, let's not yeah. fucking hang them and drag them down the streets and stuff. Yeah. Like, what do you mean to do about it? They didn't help themselves when they... Um... I remember just the press conference ahead of the ahead of the tournament where they were asked some of these questions where a lot of people were obviously saying that they wouldn't perform at the same level on, on LAN. And they said something along the lines of that every single one of their players has won something on on LAN before. So yeah. like uh, obviously that means they're they're experienced, right? And they 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 have all the yeah, everything that they need to to perform on LAN. But you know, FZ were saying like those three players are not are definitely not like seasoned veterans or anything like that. It's it's still relatively young players with relatively little experience. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the Astralis one. We touched on these guys a lot. So this is uh, the first time Astralis haven't made the playoffs of EPL since season six. Yep. Um, so that was like seven straight seasons they made the playoffs and obviously winning a couple of those seasons there as well. Um, in terms of them not making it striker, uh, they Ents, Ents was there undoing. We're going to talk about Ents in a second here. I guess Ents was probably the, the biggest thing that was there undoing. But yep. do you think that they like they're going to be missed by not being in the playoffs, or do you think that they're not there ready to go? I think they looked. They looked. I don't even know what their exact problem was, honestly. Like because I guess if you look at them, like Lucky did fine. Like yeah, he sure, did fine. he had some he had some positional mistakes, and you could tell that. Like you know, he's just new at this level. That that's something that you could tell. But like performance wise, he did okay. Like there was no. There was no glaring issue that I looked at him. I even was impressed that he was he looked super calm. Maybe he didn't like always make the the, the best decision, but I think that was more like it wasn't out of nerves. That's what I'm saying. Like he mm-hmm. didn't look like he was nervous to play at this level or anything like that. All. Not at all. Like there was no sign that he's like a new guy. That so that's that's the the one thing that impressed me about him. He wasn't amazing. Like he it's not like he blew out, he blew our minds or anything like that. And the only uh, team that he actually managed to to really step up against was BNB, which is, you know, if you think about it, that's like kind of the that's team that heading. he's probably you know used to playing against that kind of a level. So uh, that's definitely uh, the, not the most impressive team to perform against. So like, low, you're I'm, you're you're saying he's a low tier abuser. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Both yeah, abuser I mean, and low tier abuser. All in all, like sure, <clears throat> he wasn't amazing, but like there's nothing. There's nothing that would suggest that he just doesn't belong at this level at all, right? So that that's kind of my takeaway from that. Young so I'm just not abuser. even sure. I'm not even sure what to take away from their performance. Also, because of I was looking at the entry stats and I was trying to look at the match uh, with that in mind because Dupree and and Bubsky are the the two people with the lowest entry uh, attempts. They're actually the most mm. passive in, in entries, which is curious. curious. 
for sure. Because like, if you think about it, Glaive, sure, he's always going to be that aggressive guy. Like if you think about what he does on Nuke, he's constantly alone outside and just like trying to open up and stuff like that. He's always going to be, you know, involved in the introduce a lot. And he's like way up uh, compared to everybody else on the team. Mag Magisk is like 21%, you know, kind of like an average level. Uh, and then the rest of them are like 17% each or something like that. So okay. like that's interesting. Uh, something that I wanted to kind of keep an eye on. But when I was looking at their matches, that didn't, didn't even seem like Dupree changed up positions or anything like that. So it's hard to say. Uh, it's hard to say why that happened. So it's just, yeah, it was just confusing to me, honestly. I, I didn't know what to take of it, take away from it. Yeah, it's a weird one. I, I don't know what to do. I, like, like we spoke about earlier in the show, I feel like they have to go through a rebuilding phase of working out how they even want to approach things. Prof, did you have anything that stuck out that, that, that you thought was off or good or either or? My kind of, kind of, kind of similar takeaway to Striker, honestly. Like, I was, I was satisfied with what I saw from Lucky in terms of knowing that he's not a player, like, he's not a massive signing. He's not even, a, he's not even like, you know, a prodigy young player. He's just like a decent, good player, young player that's coming into a, into a team that's in a weird position. So overall, I, I think he did okay. Like, he did okay. I'm not saying that he's amazing, that maybe, maybe like we see two or three events from now that he's actually not cutting it. Maybe he needs to be replaced. But at the moment, I'm fine with him. I think that's that was the main main part of Astralis for me uh, right now. They also didn't have a lot of practice with this uh, with this lineup either. So whatever, okay. I guess. Yeah, not, nothing much. Look, I think the biggest thing is here is the greatest team in recent history, no longer the greatest, right? And you can't be the greatest forever. These things happen, right? It's just the fall off is not the most glamorous way because of COVID, device leaving, couldn't defend their major title. It's all just really flat, right? It's just like, oh, okay, well. Yeah. isn't good anymore right <clears throat> and that's the thing that sucks it's just that it's just like we never really got the last hurrah of the team yeah. so uh all in all i guess we just have to wait and see what they do in the future there's a lot to speculate about a lot to talk about but uh, not a lot we actually have definitive so uh let's wait and see let's jump into the vitality ents conversation i think ents for everybody uh must have been a positive standout i think we knew that ents could be a threat right hades has come in we think things are getting better uh, obviously, we get that Alu uh, Dark Cloud completely out of the fucking conversation, which I think is great for everybody involved over there at Ents, uh, just to have that chapter completely fucking closed. Um, then you look at the fact that we we, we knew Deha uh, is, a, is a bit of a, a powerhouse. He can be a, a strong player. Sphinx has always spoken about, you know, he has that, that ability. But then we have Snappy on Mirage against Heroic, <laughs> just going fucking God tier. So... It was interesting to see Ents Prof. I don't know what you thought about them, but they were fast. They were mixing up the pace. They had individuals popping off. They were coming in clutch. They seemed pretty pretty handy. But is this just the same as season 13 where it was like a, a good look and then it yeah. died off? I mean, I think I have a bit of a higher maybe expectation. But even though it felt very similar, it all actually just felt like a snappy team in the term in the way that they they play they had pretty decent t sides like this kind of mixing up pace a lot of executes and then just also just snappy yeah as you said had a, had an amazing time and then some individual plays mixed in, in there um and i think they're also a team that's going to come in a bit early and you know prepare when other teams aren't that prepared so they could come into the first tournament of the of the season and impress so i'm not really i'm not going to be sold on them being you know a top 10 team but I think they can maybe make this step from being a top 20-ish to maybe a top 15. I think that's maybe where I put them right now with Hades because Hades is a pretty, he's pretty fucking good. So that's a nice upgrade uh, on Alu right there. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's just nice to not have, uh, well, actually as well, it's kind of a younger team in that sense too. Like, so now it's it's uh, one for, uh, one that they're going to be able to maybe invest in for the future. I think Dota in like clutch situations. He was also pretty good. Yeah. Well. It didn't even get a mention, but like he looked pretty handy. Like he, it like crazy new one against. Yeah. Who was that? Uh, fucking spirit. Maybe could have been spirit. I think. I don't remember exactly. Was it against? You... Nah, I think yeah. it was spirit. I think it was. Spirit. It might have been. Might have been spirit for sure. Yeah. But like that, basically, like won them the match. Like they they looked in a kind of a rough spot. If they didn't win that, then that basically like pushed it over the line. So that was one, that was a key one for sure. But in general, like what I what I was interested in most, uh, and that's like again, like when I was like scouring through the, the entry, entry stats, you look at Hades and he was at like 7%, like literally lowest in the entire league. Like nobody was even close. 
and that's an opera, right? Like mm -hmm. if you look at an opera who only is involved in like seven percent of opening duels, that's kind of crazy. Currently, so I was just looking at him. 12, he's 12, 12, 12, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 12. But that's also super low. Yeah, that's for an low. opera, that's very low. Like, sure, operas are no longer like that, like, be all and end all, like, in terms of openings. Like, nobody, none of the operas are, like, super high up in there, unless you consider somebody, like, simple if he has a crazy game and stuff like that and he just goes for everything, right? But even, like, even people like Zaiwu, who are kind of, like, quite heavily set up for, like, openings and stuff like that, even he doesn't have, like, crazy numbers. It's always, like, the you know, like the Glaives and uh, even Deha, if you think about and how they're using their players, like Deha is the entry essentially like in this team. And like Hades is way on the other scale, which was interesting to me. Like he's a very unique opera. Like he's, he's like, I, yeah, I don't even know if there's somebody I would actually uh, uh, compare him to because Jame is not that. He's, he's passive, but in a different way, I guess you could say. So it's just, a, it's definitely a curious player to keep an eye on. Hmm. Uh, I want to throw you uh, Vitality here as well, Striker, just to keep the ball rolling, and then we can probably quickly get into the Sinner stuff. I don't think we're going to get through all of this before Tabson arrives, right. so we might have to revisit it. But uh, Vitality, are they looking like they're on track for you, or are you still worried? Do you still think they need uh, a bit more time to completely integrate Kyojin? What, what, what's your take on this Vitality squad? I mean, I saw I saw Masuda being back in form as a really positive sign because that's something that we had, we thought was going to happen, but then... I think a clone, he didn't have such a great time. He was only like at 0 0.95, something like that rating. Didn't really perform too well. So like that's always been the problem with Vitality, right? That they just don't have a second consistent star. And for a while, it looked like Misuda could be. And then he just dropped the ball in, in, in Cologne and they didn't really do that well there. So like now that he's back, uh, it seems like that's kind of like the the level that they need to get out of him to be able to perform well. So hopefully that's going to keep he's going to keep that keep up that level but in, but i mean that seems like something that they are very much reliant on because nobody else seems to be able to step up on a consistent basis outside of that yeah apex had uh, a decent showing in their first couple of games but uh, it's i don't know vitality for me it feels like they're missing something i don't i don't know what it is i i, I can't put my finger on it but that's kind of been the conversation about vitality for a long time right prof it's always yeah. like they've been missing something or they need to replace this guy or this guy you know that that seems to just be something that's plagued them but even what do even... they do now yeah, even with this Misura, Misura, not resurgence, but like coming to form and Zaiwu having his like amazing level, 1.36 rating, whatever, you know, winning. What what were the entries? Uh, like insane entries as well. They still didn't look like, oh, this is an amazing team. They looked okay. So that that's the problem for me, right? What what if you don't get that Misura or you get just like a very good Zaiwu, then mm. you just lose half of these games. So that that's kind of the remains the issue with vitality for me and okay. they yeah i mean they can continue with this they probably will at least until the major but i don't like i don't see them as an actual threat to let's say win the major i, I don't think that is something i can expect uh from this this five-man lineup okay yeah that's fair enough all right uh, let's jump into the Sinner stuff, Striker. Let me give you uh, you give you the floor on this one here because they kicked it off with the upset against G2, and then they lost to Complexity last night. And same issues kind of plagued them in both yeah. series. They're really struggling against these fucking Pistols. live buys, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's basically why they lost Inferno against G2. Even hello, we have a uh, Tapson already here. Tapson's here. Okay. Cool. We're gonna get him, and I guess he's still getting set up. So I'll just continue until he he says until something. Lucas hopefully, says he's good, ready to go. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, the pistols were definitely like literally against G two. They even had a chance on Inferno, but they lost something like four anti low buys that they shouldn't have, and both pistols on top. Yep. Like they they actually would have been in a, in a position to be able to win Inferno if that if that wasn't the case. Then they lost. Um, on Vertigo, it was kind of like the same thing. They were like 4-4, lost to a pistol buy, and they then lost the entire half uh, from that point on. If it wasn't for New York Frag stepping up in that massive way, they would have just lost that Series 0-2. So that's kind of like, you can definitely tell that they have some of these issues that, like, if you're going to make these mistakes at this level, you're you're just not going to be able to win these games. And it's, it kind of repeated itself in complexity. They basically lost the second map on the same issue that was like a... They were leading 14-13, then they lose two pistols, lose the map, could have gone to third map, and then, you know, they might have been 2-0 instead, right? So yep. it's just, like, some definitely some promising signs, like the fact that they beat G2 is crazy, even though G2 have definitely looked very, very bad. Okay. Hello? Hello, Tapson. 
Hello, good evening. Okay, let's do this. Shrike, we're going sure. to come back to Sinners because I'm yeah. sure we'll have a lot to say. We're going to transition, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, because a lot of people in chat, Tapson, everybody coming in, where the fuck is Tapson? Why is he not here? What's going on? Everybody wants to see you here this evening. So we're going to get the hot seat started. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the man with the plan, the German in-game leader, the uh, absolute beast is here. And uh, Lucas, roll the bumper and then we can just get straight into the hot seat. The x M42 RGB, what a fun mouse with five colorways, lightweight frame and just 59 grams with a swappable backplate to suit your grip style, the sensor, the easy cord, the smooth skates and driverless control for RGB and DPI is why you should check out the M42 RGB down below. These bombs go to the teammates. Parry Match, your esports teammate. teammate. Buy and sell your skins now. Easy, fast, and safe. The best skin site. Credit card deposits and withdrawals. Instant cash out methods. Get the best deals. Quick, simple, reliable. Bitskins.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bearing with us. Now we are back from the bumper, and there's lovely ads, a little bit of hot mic there as well. And Tabson is joining us, and we were just talking about how lovely his background is. You got Phil over there, who's always the guy hanging out with the camera, getting all the stuff done for you guys. Set you up in a nice little spot there. Uh, Tabson, you've had practice tonight. How, how are things going? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's the reason why I was late. I'm sorry for that. Um, good excuse. Practice was very, very good, I must admit. And yeah. Definitely a nice background here without all the people behind me. I, I, it wouldn't be possible to have it <laughs> so good here. So looking forward to be actually in the show. Nice. Okay. So Tapson, you, uh, I, I saw on your, your social media, you were out there, you were, in, you were in a pool somewhere, you were getting some sun, you were enjoying your time off. And now you're back at it, right? We may as well start just getting off the back of the player break before we start talking about everything last year. Um, how, how much time did you, did you take off and do you actually feel refreshed? Did it feel like the tournament break uh, was well served? um actually i had like around i would say two weeks the most completely off the computer like just enjoying family enjoying uh, enjoying vacation the sun and basically i would say it's not i would definitely uh, pre prefer to have at least maybe one more week to actually completely get the time off get your head off the, the game of the zone but i would say i'm definitely refreshed and i'm really looking forward to just the grind man i i you know, I'm shaking, I'm everything. I'm just ready to grind with the new player. And that's basically how it works here. Okay, nice. So so we're going to definitely jump into the Zantara's and Gage stuff a little bit later on. But we have a lot to reflect on, right? So last year, big, you guys, uh, for one point in the year, managed to get to, to number one in the world as per the HLTV.org rankings, right? Uh, last year, there was a lot of teams who actually managed to to achieve that throughout, at least it feels that way, right? It feels like we had a couple of names who are popping up uh, around to that level. Now, with 2020 and us moving online for a lot of that, uh, how, was, it, was it a lot harder in that year to, to, first of all, try and get to number one because everybody had nothing else to do other than just play CS? Like, what was that like to play in? It was rough. Like just thinking about 2020, it was really, really rough. Like you had tournaments after tournaments. You'd have no time to regain energy. Just needed to grind, and everyone needs to do the same. Basically, it was really tough to be on the top. And as well, of course, like all the teams, there were many top teams at this time. Yeah, there were many teams who grinded to the top one or top five who you never believed they could make it. But I would say all had the same uh, circumstances, all had the same things they needed to do. It was just grinding, basically. And the teams who grind the most, for example, as well, like Gambit, it just, the grind definitely it pays off. And it the same did for us. We had no uh, day's break. We had nothing else to do, just grinding. We had boot camps after boot camps, practice after practice, watching the tournament games, and then just preparing for the next tournament. And, stuff what we did and basically it was really really hard to maintain the energy and also maintain the the consistency in this time uh, prof strike you got anything on this from from last year when they were you know had that great serious and form and all that jazz what, what was it like to to achieve that number one uh, number one spot as big with a german team and zantaris but mainly a german team german organization right 
obviously it was a huge milestone for us like getting to the top one in the world is something outstanding i will always remember even though it was online it would have been definitely something else if it was on land you would remember the games more more often you would also remember the feeling obviously but the feeling was still like it was amazing in my eyes and i hope i will get the feeling once again so <laughs> i can't wait okay uh now Look, last year, as we talked about, there was a lot of uh, teams who were all just grinding, right? And you're talking about being in this boot camp environment. I'm kind of reflecting on now and this year. Is that the same plan is just to keep being in that office and keep everybody just playing like that? Or is it going to change and you guys after, say, Pro League or after you've had a boot camp off the player break are going to go back to playing more from home? Or is, do you guys prefer playing from the office? What's, what's the thoughts there? Um, basically, basically, our thoughts are behind that um, we are playing the most biggest tournaments, which are, for example, ESL, Blast, obviously, and also the Army Air tournaments. We are playing it from the office, which is the most important ones. If we have smaller tournaments or boot camps, maybe online boot camps, we just prefer to do it also back at home to also have something else in mind, not always being in the office, being always 24-7 with the game. And basically, we just try to have the biggest tournaments played here in the office with the nice environment we have, getting food all the time, getting just people taking care of taking care of us every time and um, that's basically how it works here and of course we prefer to have LAN obviously but we have the environment to be at the same place that we have the same environment here with the computers monitors basically same feeling and we just try to make it as comfortable as we can okay. who's the who's the most important part of the of the big staff that, uh, at the boot camp well it's really hard to say but definitely one of the most important ones is definitely um, Nuran, like she's the wife of our CEO. She makes lovely food, and obviously also all the other play, uh, staff members. I cannot really say all the names because there are so many behind it. Without any one of them, it wouldn't be possible to just focus on the game. It literally is like that, and I just can always say the, the more often people ask me, I always say the same answer because it is how it is. Without them, I wouldn't be myself to be honest. I couldn't play like I do. How I concentrate with the game and everyone else. Uh, he in the office, of course, is just doing the job. Is God Bay still around? Unfortunately, he's not around. He's now focused on Valorant. Uh, they have from time it. to time. Yeah, we lost him, unfortunately. But from time to time, we have some boot. They have some boot camps here, so we see, we still see him. Is he coming up with any crazy ideas from Valorant? He's like, hey, Tyson, you thought about trying this in Canada? Try get anything <laughs> coming across? Or nah, not anymore. But okay. he's watching our games for sure, and he gives me still some tips here and there. But always lovely to talk to him. Okay, nice. Um, all right, so we've got one little topic here about uh, what makes staying at the top so hard. So let's just reflect a little bit more on last year when you guys did make it that far uh, and get that number one world ranking, right? Do you think in your mind it's harder to maintain like the freshness of the approach to the game, like updating your strategies, not getting counter strated Do you think it's harder to keep the players playing at that highest level possible? Which which do you think is the more difficult one to, to balance? Um. For, for me personally, I think it's more difficult to balance your, the, your whole game, like as a team, to have more strategies, to have more moves. Because the, lately, every team has an analyst, analyst, also a coach, maybe an assistant coach. So basically, everyone knows how your underwear looks like. Mm. And you, need to be able, <laughs> you need to be able to mix something around, you know. And if you're not able to do so, top teams like Gambit, Heroic, they will just smash you. And to, re to remain this kind of energy, to always fix new stuff, to always change a little things, it's really hard. And everyone needs to be on the same page to do so. Okay. So who's your analyst at the moment? It's so. It's, okay. He's not really known, but he's doing a ton of work. And of course, we have also an assistant coach. Legia is back on the, oh. on the track. He was yeah. never gone. He's basically one of us, always been, and he always will. All right, and and dude is uh, has taken over from Toby, right? So you guys have actually like handled the coaching stuff around a little bit in recent time. Um, when you guys got, went, got dude, I guess this is a conversation in itself. How did was he already? Was he the assistant coach? Like I, I completely forget where he came from. He was part of alternate alternate attacks for a while there, right? He was even playing with Mantu, if I remember yeah, yeah. rightly. So getting him as the coach was just like this guy's so handsome. How can we not have him on the team? Or, or what? What was the thought process there? Uh, he's definitely handsome, but um, the thought process was behind that he's really, really smart and he's also really, he's willing to work. He's just doing everything what the team needs and he knows exactly how like a team needs to work. And of course, he's not so experienced in a coaching way, but he definitely knows how the game works and how we definitely, uh, how we work as a team. And we had the best, I think we had the best try with um, Dude as an assistant coach and Toby, of course, as a head coach. Mm. And he taught him a lot. 
And obviously I'm talking a lot with Dustin, like with Dude as well. Like we just try to make it work. Obviously we are working really hard and that's what I really love and like about him. That's his effort and his will to work basically is really, really good. Okay. Strike seemed like a, seemed yeah. like a smooth transition from the outside just because of what you were just referring to, right? That the, like considering he was the assistant coach for a while and there was, it seemed like it was kind of almost planned for him to kind of transition into the into the role of the the, the full time coach, um, even like leading up to the to the departure of Toby, right? Yeah, definitely, it was planned. Like we knew that Toby will at some point just uh, stop being a coach. He has some other stuff to do, obviously. And um, yeah, we we knew that we need someone who is also willing to just put his real life in the back. We need someone who is really here with us, trying to be on the same page, trying to work his ass off, and that was definitely the right fit. Okay, nice. All right. Let's jump into uh, a bit more recent results. So 2021 hasn't necessarily been the best for big, right? You guys are still up there as a, as a very competitive team, you, but you came last place in Katowice, uh, you had EPL season 13. Like now, now we're looking down the straight of the end of the year, right? You've changed a player. I, I want to get stuck into that. But what do you think it was that you guys got off to a slower 2021 than you did in 2020? Um, I feel at some point that like you are getting outplayed by yourself basically you are just thinking about too much in the game also of course outside of the game and you just maybe at some point struggle with some stuff which never uh, which didn't work for a time and obviously if this is our system and this our system doesn't work people start to doubt people start to maybe not play the thing what we what they are supposed to do and then obviously you are not playing the things which usually should be doing right mm. and obviously our i think our our um like um, the results were not the yellow from the egg, yeah. And obviously, we just tried to make it work. I think we had uh, we had a good run in Cologne. It was not so bad. I think we we should have managed to go playoffs, mm -hmm. but obviously we didn't make it, so it's not good enough. But you guys beat VP and then you you lost to yeah. them, right? If that was the rough comeback, right? Yeah, exactly. Like we lost two unfortunate rounds where I think it was. Um, he came down, he was on B side, it was 14-12. We went through the smoke and B tunnels and he killed four of us. He was alone B side. So if you just win one of these rounds, I think it looks different. But of course, we don't take anything away from them. They they deserved it. And obviously also we got smashed by G2, like the game before. Mm. So yeah, those games for people who might not remember, it was uh, 1915 on Dust 2 and then 1916 on Inferno. Fuck and hell. That's one of the heartbreakers, isn't it? Oh dear, I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to, yeah, just, <laughs> I'm just thinking about how it would feel if it was me, I can't imagine how you must have, holy shit. All right, so, uh, look, uh, I want to jump straight into the Zantara's Gate stuff. I don't let's, know about, let's do it. let's yeah. get because this yeah. stuff here, this is the real meat and potatoes, right? This is what everyone, uh, I think, wants to hear about. So Zantara's, you had him for a, for a decent amount of time, you guys said he's going to learn German. I think we all know he didn't learn German. German is bloody hard to learn, right? You guys, it's not easy. Das, meine, meine Deutsch ist nicht gut, ich lerne langsam. That's all I've known. And I, I, I used to live here, right? So that's what I roll with every day. I know it's difficult. But um, you guys, over the player break, you replaced Antares. Now, was this... Was this a decision that you knew had to happen? Was the communication issue something that, that was really plaguing you? Um... To be fair, I don't think it was only the communication. At some point, after two years playing with each other, you know how the people or how the person works. Mm. It's not about communication at this time. It's also more about how he how he sees himself in the future, what he sees in this, what he what he sees himself, what he wants to do, what he lo loves to do. Obviously, it's playing CS, but if he doesn't feel comfortable, obviously with the communication barrier, we we were not able to talk properly together. Yeah, that's also a huge mm. thing. Um, I can understand how he felt i can also what i can say about my side is obviously i wish that he would have learned german so i can talk with him more intense about anything else inside of the game outside of the game hang with each other out of the out of the game and stuff like that unfortunately it didn't work out so I, obviously i i really appreciate the hard work that he tried to do it it's not nothing nothing easy it's not easy said and done yeah it's mm. really really hard language you have so many hard works to learn and how the language works. Even myself as a born German, my German is really bad. So... <laughs> okay, because we had that, we had Smoother on it actually a couple times. And uh, one of the things we were talking to him about was like the, the way that the communication was fed through the team. And uh, maybe you could confirm what I am Prof and Striker, you'd need to call me out here if I'm misremembering what Smoother said. I have a terrible memory. But I, I think he was saying that 
a lot of the communication would have been done in German and then you would have just translated to him what he needed to know in English. So he didn't really know the bigger picture or maybe he had a rough idea, but you were kind of just letting him know what he needed to do and then the rest of the team, you were managing them. Is, is that close to the case? Um, I would say if it's something I need to do on the fly, obviously, yes, but mm -hmm. we have something prepared beforehand, obviously. Like okay. we have all the like the tactics, the moves and stuff that are prepared beforehand. So basically he knows exactly what he needs to do, how the whole picture looks like. Obviously, if I need to change something in the game, which is maybe needed for me in my eyes, then I need to translate it maybe in English for him because I say something in German to them. It's not the best case, obviously, because I need to really react fast. Obviously, talking English, it's really hard if you're not... It's not your mother language. It's really mm. hard to also talk, think about in the language because you have four players who talks and who breathes German. It's really hard to always also talk in English at this time. So basically, I it's kind of true, yeah, but it's also not true. Fine. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, you, you think, had a bit of experience. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Go for it. Uh, do you think it would have been harder to just... Um, like a lot of these... When these things happen, right? When you bring in a player, even if it's just one player from a different language, a lot of teams just go the the way of just like everybody speaks English at all times, right? Just just to get everybody in that, in that mindset, right? Not having to switch between two languages. I know that's a lot of, that's something that a lot of people struggle with. So was that never a part of the conversation or or how did that work? Oh, that was definitely 100% always the case. We try to always talk English, but if you're okay. in, in a country where you speak German the most and you have also obviously people talking here in the office, for example, German, then you also tend to speak German more easy. We try to make it really strict that we always talk English when he's around, obviously to make him feel comfortable. But it was always really hard to always think about yourself. You, we always try to remind ourselves as well. But it's, I think it's really actually hard to to also make everyone feels comfortable that we are that everyone feels really in as a team, basically. Hmm. I yeah. mean, some teams. I think G two is a team that has some rules about it as well, at, at least to some point uh, in the past. I know like Malik, uh, I talked to him once, he had these like plans to split up the the Serbs and the, and the Frenchies in, in rooms, you know, so they're all split so they can have to speak English all the time, practice. But even them, you see them in, in comms uh, from their matches. They still, when they're in a 2v2, they're going to speak their own language because it's, it's so much easier. And I think that if you ever had like maybe some co cousins come over from a different country. Like I have like some Italian people come over. Ah, we'll speak English now so everyone understands. And like two minutes in, they're like, I don't know, io sono, cazzo, I don't know, whatever, you know. And it's just too normal to you just switch back to your language all the time. Yeah, that's I, true. I, I, I wanted to I wanted to ask this tab. So now I don't know if if this is a is a good question to ask or not. But with the Zantaris, uh situation right was this like a mutual thing was it like Zantara was like okay well this like I don't, I don't think we're going to be able to get more out of me with this team and I want to go try something else so were you guys like this isn't going to work anymore and we need to get everybody speaking German or what how did it all come about was it was it something that was brewing over time or was this relatively sudden um I think it was relatively sudden as well but I would definitely say um that I mean Obviously, Santaris, I love Santaris, man. He's a really nice guy. And I really love that, that we would have made it work. But I think his biggest wish was just to feel also more comfortable that he can speak more fluent. We have people in the organization who speaks fluent Turkish. When he's around them, when he's around with them, he speaks really a lot. But we, when basically we are on a team, basically he cannot speak so much. He cannot speak properly. He cannot, he cannot really tell what he feels like. Can't express himself. He can't express himself. Exactly. Thanks, thanks for helping me. Basically, that I also feel really bad for him. And obviously, his biggest wish was to go to Turkey, make a super team where he feels the most, um, the most comfortable with. And obviously, we, are, we, we would never let him... Like we wouldn't, we wouldn't um, throw stones at him, basically, or yeah. something, you know. And um, I truly wish him best of luck. And obviously, we are still good friends. And um, hopefully, one day, maybe you never say never. One day, maybe we will still play in the same team. Yeah. Well, look, the future uh, is always pretty open. I think that's one of the things that people tend not to understand about a lot of individuals, right? They just see this player in the server playing Counter Strike, but Zantara has shifted his entire life right yeah. to, to move to germany right it's a it's a similar story with a lot of players out there but uh, i think when you're doing that you're sacrificing a lot and like 
take it from from me getting homesick you can pretend you don't get homesick for the longest period of time but it eventually it'll come and hit you right so for Zantaras, i can understand why he'd want to go back to playing with with these uh is is want to say what's what's a good word i'm looking for here the other turkish Compatriots. players that work? yeah that's a, <laughs> there we go um so let's shift the conversation the dialogue a little bit now over to, to talking about gade because i think that hit everybody in the face like a wet fish no one saw that coming mate like uh, we all know that the Danes are super smart cookies and they can speak English and Danish and they learn a billion different languages. But for him to come into the team, and I think we had Lenz in the chat uh, not too far ago uh, and saying that he was surprised or impressed, maybe impressed was the word, of how good Gade's German is. Like, is he fluent? You're sitting there having full conversations with him? Actually, the first thing when I think about Gade is I'm really impressed, not about his language, also about his mentality. He actually speaks German. And but I must say about as well is our most important thing was not that we go to full German lineup or that we speak German fluently. It was not about that. It was just a I would say just it was just random a little bit mm. that we got gate. Yeah. He basically the, the conversation conversation was hey, if something happens, there was there were some rumors about some tiles leaving the team, and he hit me up like, Hey, if there's something up, let me know. And I was like, Hey, bro. You know that I wanted you back in the days in my team. We offered him a spot like long, long time ago, and he back then joined Optic because he had a better op uh, offer. And I knew that he speaks German, even though it was a little. He learned it in German uh, in the school, and I know it might be a bit rough, even though it was long, long time that he didn't talk and stuff like that. But I know he knows it a little bit at least. And I think it was also a huge um, positive point that he was also IGL back in the days. He has experience, he can help me, he can help the whole team with some structure, with some calls. And I think personally that was one of the best pickups we can make because he helps me a lot, not always in-game, also outside of the game, obviously with his mentality, his mindset, his positive mindset. And um, that was basically how we got Gabe. Okay. All right, that's that's pretty interesting right there. I, I think immediately, right, when people saw it, first of all, there was the question about him speaking German, which you've just said, yeah, he does, bang on. But then I think the next biggest question on a lot of people's tongues is, what's going to happen to the firepower, right? Because Zintara is a star player, right? Are we, are we going to get, like, high-level Gade? Or because everybody's speaking German and everyone's speaking in, in, the, in the language which should make things easier, are we going to get a lift in level from everybody? Like, what, what is the diagnosis from Tabson here? Are we going to get the Tabson that I remember fucking jumping out of apartments on inferno and just killing it i remember i don't even remember what event it was but i remember it vividly that you just jumped out of apartments and owned everybody on this game in inferno it just it's stuck in my brain like are we going to get like everybody else bolstered or is gade a bit of a sleeper are we sleeping on gade's ability definitely sleeping on gade like, okay i know that he's been not for a long time like he was missing for some time people didn't have him on radar and stuff but i know he used to be a star player. Like he was in the shadow basically from all the star players in North, basically. I felt like he's a he was insane at aiming off, obviously, but also how he handled situation, how he looks in the situations. He is definitely a really like all around player. I think this and on top, of course, obviously, since Kantaro is gone, we all will have to make more frags in the case that which we get easier frags. We try to have some easier frags beforehand, but with Santaris, sometimes you don't have the easiest frags. You know he will make multi-kills. That's the way how we used to play. We try to make frags, easy frags for us, but you know if it comes to, hey, we need one guy who's hitting the most, if Santaris is on the side, he will make three kills and we can retake afterwards. But at this time, we will have some more team play. We have more team communication where we get easier kills done where everyone has to put my effort to the team, better grenades, better communication, better team play with a little bit jiggle here and there, so someone gets an easier kill. Basically, everyone needs to have more kills in, at all. And of course, we just need someone who's like he was put, putting up numbers. Either it's me, it's Zerzon maybe. Of course, it can be Kito, Tizian, and of course, Gate. I think everyone of us is capable of putting up some numbers, but I think at the, at the whole picture, everyone needs to be a little bit better. Okay. Boys, you got anything you want to follow up on this? What about the roles? How are you gonna how are you gonna reallocate that? Who's gonna fit into the Zantaris position? Is it gonna be straight for Gade or is Keto maybe gonna get some some better roles or how's it gonna work out? Um at this time, since um yeah, one week we've been practicing and we talked before with Gate that what position did you like the most? What position did you play before? And basically he fits perfectly to the picture of Santaris. And how it works right now for us is that 
um, basically what was missing was a little bit of voiceness of the left side of Xantares that played. Obviously, Xantares can communicate what he sees, what he can think, what where people do something maybe, or what he can do. But I, from gate perspective, now he can do much more. He can coordinate people what they need to do. They can He can make some calls up on himself, what he thinks is the right choice. And basically, we give him the... Um, the what is the word? The, Freedom. Yeah, the freedom to do so. Obviously, yeah. if he feels comfortable, then he will do it. But time will tell. I, I think he is definitely a second caller in this team, and he can definitely make decisions based on what he thinks is right. Yeah. yeah. So, so is it mostly like from the on the city side that you need this, like the second, like the small side caller? Let's say I think in the past maybe people thought of NBK as one of these guys. I know, like it, you have to be in the team to understand these things. But let's say if it's Inferno and Tabson is on A, you have to have you have two guys on B. You need to have someone between those two guys who's going to say, okay, now we, we, when you're on the side, you see like three flashes, Molotovs. Are we going to fight or are we not going to fight? And you need to be there. You can't call that from the, from the other side. So, from what I understand, Gade is going to be the guy that fits into that role. Absolutely. SCT, 100% for sure. ST as well. Like there are some situations where, for example, you gave a Duke example. Um, there are some like the lovely smokes outside, the closed main ones. You make free smokes and you put someone in the garage maybe and rest is lurking somewhere in the lobby where four players and lobby, one is outside. Basically, I was always the outside player and I needed to micromanage the lobby guys. Mm. And that's a huge, huge thing I cannot do always because I need to focus on my crosshair. I need to focus what's happening around me. And I needed to give them the timings. Obviously, we talked about it. If pressure situations here and there, you are missing sometimes something. And this is something Niklas will for sure take over. And this is something I'm looking forward to. Surprising, like considering, like I know Tizian's obviously a bit more of uh, the supportive element within the team, but I thought that maybe like he would be tasked with doing that stuff in the past, right? But uh, it's interesting that Gade's going to get such um, such an important role, right, immediately within the team. So it sounds like he's going to be bringing a lot here. Now, one of the things that I looked at with your team, and uh, I'm, I'm definitely much older than all of you, but your team is not a young team, right? You guys, uh, you were all like 25 plus, right? So, or at least around that. So in, in terms of the team, and, and this is where we can transition into, I guess, the goals for Big, how long are you putting on the project before you seeing the results that you guys want? Is this like we're going to give ourselves six months with Gate? It's going to be long integration. Are you going? We want to hit the ground running. What What are we talking here for Big? Uh, it's a good point. We have really never talked about these kind of things okay. for us. Like as an organization, ever since we we did something with Toby, he taught me personally. It's a part. It's a process. You don't do. You don't have goals for six months. You have goals where you need to be better at the next game. You need okay. to be better the next game. And then at some point you win tournaments. Then you need to be better again. You need to be better again. So basically I'm just looking game after game and I'm just hoping that everything works out like you think. If it's not working out, I think we will just at some point, of course, consider a talk. Hey, what's going on? Do we need to do something else? We are open-minded, of course. We are professionals. We need to talk about it. That's how it works in the business. You, sometimes you have a good run. Sometimes you have a bad run. It can happen. And obviously you just need to deal with that as well. Well, what about this? Was it was it Maniac Boys? I guess you yeah. guys can. Yeah, I, I have this like on my mind fast this because no it's it's a very uh, like Maniac had this. We were talking about big. Uh, this was before the changes, and it felt like like this year maybe you hit like a plateau. Maybe not even a plateau. You dropped off a bit from last year, but you were still top ten. That that's kind of the the position where you are. And his he kind of laid out the theory. He didn't say this was the case, but maybe this was the case, right? That you're a team that you're a German team limited talent pool all of that maybe you're happy just being you know between top five and top 10 sometimes going deep in tournaments sometimes maybe not but like if this is a stable position where you can be you don't have to be some of these you know the navis and the g2s that need to make a roster change they need to be number one they need to win all of the tournaments win the majors is there something to it like are you happy just being a good top top contender right Absolutely. I think we all can be proud in Germany if that we have a top 10 team in the world. Like we've been missing it for years and years. Now we have a team which can maybe win some tournaments, maybe not. Maybe we can win against one of the best teams in the world. We can maybe tickle them a little bit. You know, we can. You, this is something I'm looking always for, up to. I know we can win tournaments. There needs to be maybe some things right 
we need to, of course, maybe have some lucky in there. But I'm really confident that our team is has the right, fit, uh, like the right fitting pieces. We have the right mindset, and we just need to also put the work to it, you know. And if we don't do it, obviously there will be teams who work harder than us. They are better than us. Everyone in the world has the has the be best aiming in the world. So you can't really say what well, I have outstanding aim. Everyone in the top top teams has good aiming. It's more about playing like chess, you know, like, hey, they do this, we do this. Okay, what are they doing then? We are doing this. And basically, if everyone is on the same page, I think we will be able to also win tournaments again. And I obviously, I'm I'm always willing and I will always want to win tournaments. But if it's only the top five, obviously, I will not be, oh man, it's the top five. Yeah, it's the top five, you know. Obviously, I will be also sad if in the tournament, I, I get kicked out from G2 and in the final, whatever. I'm really sad the one day, but I'm looking for after, oh, we are top. We are top two team in the world at the moment. So, um, of course, I'm really proud of us. Again, yeah, I think history suggests anything. You're going to beat G2 in that final. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's one of the things right in Counter Strike. A lot of the time, if uh, you're not first, you're last, right? That's how it's it's definitely framed, at least from like a community perspective. If you're not if you're not winning all your games, well, then you're just not good enough, right? And I think there's a lot of things that people need to consider. Everybody who's a top team is working really hard to be a top team. So like it's, it, it's, it's not like it's not a competitive landscape. It's quite the opposite. It's a highly competitive landscape. But I wouldn't mind transitioning this. We've got a couple more topics here for the hot seat. And then uh, we'll get into just our finishing off of the group uh, A and B EPL discussion and then C and D. And then some questions. I'm sure we have a lot of lovely questions from uh, the viewers for Tabson. Um, now, Tabson, in terms of, right, like you as the in-game leader of this team, you're almost like the in-game leader of Germany, right? You know what I mean? Like you, you're you're now the, you, you're God B, right? Like you, you've kind of taken <laughs> over that mantle, right? In the sense that when we talk about Germany and, and German Counter-Strike, I remember watching you when you were in the NRG team. This was like back when I was working one of my first events on the desk. You were with NRG, um, it, you were with Legia, God B, I think, yeah, yeah, PTR in the roster at the time, yeah. maybe. I uh, forget who. Fugly, Fugly. was it? Yeah, yeah, there we go. Jesus. Okay, it works sometimes. <laughs> I remember watching that, and and you were just an absolute monster, right? You could see right there that you were you were going to be one of the best, if not the best, German player going forward, right? That you could just see your your ability was insane, and now you've molded yourself and and had to take a lot of sacrifices by being the in-game leader because we all know what what comes with that role you were just talking about it on nuke for example when you're having to micromanage and you're in the most highly impactful position with warehouse control looking for a fucking kill right you as an in-game leader now that you don't have god be there all the time on the side you're having to kind of create and, and come up and uh, with all the stuff as an in-game leader yourself does it become difficult to to keep coming up with fresh concepts and and, and stuff like that or are you feel like you're a leader now and this is something that you, you're going to do for the rest of your career um first of all appreciate that you think that i'm gonna copy no one is like copy. <laughs> impossible but even though i really at this time i really like my position how i'm also looking at the game like i many people taught me really different perspectives of the game for example fatih obviously He's one of the biggest mind, minds in CS. Like how he watches the game or he lo how he looks the game is out of this of this out of this world. Yeah, and obviously I learned a lot from him. And I was not in like in the beginning I was not entirely sure if I can I if I'm be able to do that. I know that my personality is I I will be able to scream at people people if I need. I can be harsh. I can be also lovely, of course, if we do nice things. <laughs> but I I. I I didn't know if I can like micromanage all the things, play at the high level. But at some point, of course, there need there needed to be one guy. And I was talking with Fatih a lot, and he always said like, "You need to be the guy. You need to be the guy." And at some point, I just said, "Okay, fuck it, I will be the guy." And then, obviously, now since two years, I'm really enjoying it, and I know that there's there's a lot of hard work to put on to like maintain a certain level for the team. You need to have a consistency. You need to have a routine. You need to do all the, the work. You need to do it, and if someone's not doing it, then you know where you at you where you land eventually. Yeah. So basically, I'm really looking forward to for the new for the for the like upcoming years where we where we'll have more experience, where I will also learn from my mistakes from the past, and obviously I have all the right people who help me. Every time I if I'm missing something, hey, I need someone who maybe finds me some grenades. I need someone who can maybe think with me some, about some moves, maybe some tactics. I have people who help me all the time. And was I think it was back in the days a little bit different. Gopi was always alone. Basically, he did everything alone. And I'm grateful for that, that I don't have to do it alone because I would just smash myself at some point for sure. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, boys, you got any other questions for Tavson around this, or should we should we get into the who wants to be a skinnyer? And uh... Uh, I guess just like a look for for the future. Obviously, one of the things that uh, one of the players that we didn't touch on at all, and he's maybe maybe the most important player of your of your team last year was is Serson on the op. Uh, also had some ups and downs in terms of his form. Is also a thing that people are also asking in the chat that he doesn't like the boot camp for some reason. What's what's going on with Serson? How how do you think? What do you need to do to have him in that peak form that that you had him last year? Mm, I think for that, obviously, he just needs to feel comfortable, and he is one of the persons or players who feels if something is not right, like he feels that something is wrong, and if something feels wrong and you are not able to fix that, obviously, you cannot always perform. Some people can because they don't give a fuck. They can just they just look at themselves. Hey, I need to perform. I just play. He's this kind of guy. He wants that the whole team performs obviously also good, and he wants to have a good mood always and stuff like that. Basically, we just need to find the right mood. I think we are on the right path, and I'm looking forward that he's just we're just unleashing the beast again, and he's definitely capable of being one of the best operas, if not the best the best opera in the world. He has the he has the limit like the mentality as well. Of course, he has also the the mechanics to do so, yeah, he's playing high sense. He can do whatever he wants to do with the op, yeah, sneak, jump, whatever, you know. And he's really smart with the op. He knows exactly how to abuse the op. And basically, I know that he can be one of the best oppers in the world. I hope that we will see it this year. Still, I know the year is always already late, but I'm pretty sure we will. We will show what he can do, of course, and what we can do. Huh? Nice. All right. I'm sure we're going to return to some questions about the team once we get uh, to play it on the end of the show. But Tabson, right now, what we do at the end of the hot seat is a thing called Who Wants to Be a Skin Yenair? I don't know if you've ever seen the TV show. I don't even know if it's in Germany. And uh, don't bring up the copyright stuff proper. Right? I got on the phone to <laughs> fine. But uh, there's a game show called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Now, we've kind of grabbed a similar format. But basically, what happens here is we have a bunch of questions for you, five in total. And each question you get right is what is going to uh, go as a skin for the viewers. So you're about to win skins for the viewers. If you get all five right, the viewers win, or well, at least one of them wins a skin worth $50. If you get four right, 15, three right, 750, you get two right, 250. And if you only get one right, well, they only get one with 50 cents. So no pressure here, right? Don't worry, you can win the chat something pretty tidy right now. Um, okay, so Lucas has put a link for you in TeamSpeak. If you click that link right there, and he's also said tabs, you actually click the answer when you want, all right? So basically, yeah. once we get this started, the questions will pop up. I'll read them out, and you get a, a time to answer these, all right? So Lucas, let's get who wants to be a skinnyer underway. Question yeah, okay. number one. <clears throat> which, uh, with which team did Zantares play his first HLTV featured LAN event? Was it A, Dark Passage, B, Hellraisers, or C, Space Soldiers? The space Ooh, Soldiers. Straight in with Space Soldiers there. Tabson just locking it in immediately. Was he right? Yeah. He was, he was right. Yeah, he was right. So right. I'm impressed. So fast. All right, that was quick. Jeez, <laughs> not even any thought. Just bang, straight in. Okay, one right. Let's go on to question number two. I like this. Question two, which organization never won an EPL season? Navi, Mouse Sports, or G2? Well, we're in season number 14 of EPL. There's been a few of them. Which Bunch one are you them? thinking here? I think I did G2, but I'm not sure if I'm right. I think G2 won in like season five or six. Five, I think, yeah, in Dallas. Something like that yeah. in Dallas. So is it Navi, Prof? Have you put in a bit of a sneaky one here? Uh, Navi. Okay. It is Navi. All right, all right, all right. Question three. Let's, let's keep I it rolling. I was kind of surprised by this as well. <sighs> yeah, well, that is pretty I didn't pretty expect odd, that one, it? yeah. All right, trick question out early from Prof. I thought we were going to make the questions easier, Prof. What's going on? Question <laughs> three. Lucas, there we go. What is the last LAN event, big or small, that Sprout won? DreamHack Open Atlanta 2020, ESL Meisterschaft Winter 2019, or the Toyota Masters Bangkok in 2018? All right, Tabson <laughs> selected ESL Meisterschaft Winter 2019, and that one's correct. You remember that one? <laughs> oh, of course I do. What happened there? Uh, nothing. We don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can forget about that one. Uh, question number four. Coming in thick and hot here. Which map has been played the most among the top 30 teams in 2021? Is it A, Inferno, B, Nuke, or C, Dust2? 
Ooh, if you could dust two. With dust two here, and he's correct. Ah. Have you been checking the stats out, or was that no, just intuition? It's intuition. All right, all right. I what? believe dust two is played like obviously it's the most, but like I see dust two every time. It yeah. seems like creeping in a lot. I remember when Dust Two first came back in with the with the redone version. It felt like people forgot how to play Dust Two. Like I yeah. swear to God, it was <laughs> really weird. I don't know how that happened. Anyway, question number five. This is the, the final question. Here we go. G Two won their last big event in 2017. Who was the MVP at that tournament? Kenny S, Nico, or Shocks? <laughs> Oh dear! I guess it was Nico, right? <laughs> Jesus, Prof, you've really well. It, do it doesn't say that the MVP was from the winning team. So you set him up here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The trick question. He's gone with Kenny S, and Kenny's correct. I think you've done the best taps and out of anybody that we've had on the show. It. Really? That's nailed think. it. Yeah. Is, it, yeah. Yeah, I think he's the only one that won. Uh, I mean, I think we gave it to Smuya, but that was like kind of you know on the green table, as, yeah. as they say. So this is the first legit win. Nice. That's, That's great. great. I'm good at it. Nice. All right. Well, Tabson, you absolutely nailed that one right there. And uh, the winner of the skin is Harold underscore hard base. Hard base. Hard base. Yeah. Hard base. Hard, hard base. Harold underscore hard base. So uh, good job, Harold. You, you won. Thanks to Tabson. So you got a lot of thanks to give right here. Now, uh, we're going to keep the show going. And Tabson, what we're going to do is we're going to return to what we were just talking about with EPL. And then we'll get your import on all this stuff if that's cool with you sure nice all right so we were just talking about sinners when you joined and striker as a man from the czech republic he should have said me had the flags out he was standing up proud he's singing the national anthem he was having beers, a great time beers <laughs> <laughs> loving it but uh do you want to finish your thought there strike i don't know if you remember where you're at we're talking sure. about issues with the pistols right yeah, yeah. And we'll, i mean that's so... definitely something that plagued them and that's that definitely kind of cost them a chance in that complexity match cost them a chance to even go 2-0 against g2 um, obviously, you know, a lot of bright spots as well in terms of Neofrag actually showing up in his first game. That was a crazy performance. Uh, Oscar took a little bit of time to to kind of warm up and I'm still waiting for like a big Oscar performance because we haven't still seen that. And I think they're going to have to, they're going to need that for, for the rest of the group if they want to go through. So uh, that's something that I'm still waiting on. But so far, like super promising signs to beat G2 is, uh, is no no small feat, even if G2 are looking really rough uh, in terms of individuals and and their T sides is looking pretty bad. So um, in general, really promising from the from the guys. Yeah, an underdog team that is actually looking like they might be able to uh, to get something done in this one. Now, uh, Tabson, do you know much about Sinners? Have you come across them much in practice or in officials? Like are they a team that have been on your radar at all? Obviously, they they smashed us in the road to EPL. Like ah, we played against oh, them. Yeah, that's right. Is uh, he a premier and? Ever since we played against them, I knew they will have definitely some power to also play against the better teams. They have Oscar. Obviously, Oscar is one of the, I would say, one of the slowest and I would say boring opas in the world, but he's <laughs> the most efficient one. Like he just smashed you if you do a mistake. And basically, if you have also the firepower you need, they play good counter strike. And that, since they be uh, beat us, I think. Every team who is like upcoming and they beat us, I think at some point they also get much better. They get the confidence is if it's us or someone else in the top ten in the world, they get the confidence to also hey, we can smash better teams. That's what you think it is. It's just the confidence, right? Because we I, watching them play the CT side of Vertigo against G two, they looked very tidy. They looked like they had good ideas. They 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 look like a well oiled machine, really. You think it's just the confidence, right? That that's all it is. It's just that that ledge they need to get over. Or do you think that? There's some other, like the players in the team, right? So far, I think in EPL, we've seen good stuff out of Neofrag. He had a really good game against G2 on, on Vertigo, especially Oscar, as, as Striker was saying, was he was doing his job. He was doing what we expect of Oscar. But Shock was probably the individual who was showing up and showing that he had a bit more. I, I, look, I, I'm not going to lie. I don't know a whole lot about Zedko or, or, or I kept calling him. Yeah, well, essentially, thick. Yeah. essentially, Zetko is like is like the most experienced player on the roster because he was part of that Extatus team that actually was like the the only other Czech team that ever made it to the top thirty. Okay. So it's, uh, that actually, he actually played with Frozen at that time, so that's kind of where he comes from. So he's kind of like the I'm not sure. If he, well, he's not the oldest because Oscar is there, obviously, but you know, outside of him, uh, it's kind of like a lot of bunch a bunch of young guys. BC is kind of like the guy who had to take who was like a star player who had to take a step back and and start doing the eye drilling going in first in this team and just like took a hit on himself and he's just kind of like getting criticized for it as well so he's that type of a guy you know who just had to had to take a hit for the team essentially but he does know that casting his alias it does sound like bee's dick or beast dick 
I don't right? think like he does know I that, never, right? I like never, I did, I did never came across my mind. I think that's just you, man. Even when you're <laughs> saying it on stream, like I didn't understand what you're, yeah. what the point. Oh, really? Was, was it no. like I? No. When Alex said it, and I was, and it, I saw it a grin on his face. I, I was like, no, well, this is it. And for me, it's, I was like, I was just saying it. But really, when you think about it, you know, it, I, I think you just gotcha. need to grow up. Yeah, look, I'm 32 <laughs> yeah. now. I don't know how much, uh, how much more growing up is going to happen here, but. Uh, I yeah. mean, in terms of shock, like he's the he's the guy I kind of expected to be like the third star on this team. Yeah, and he's never really lived up to that so far. I feel like he's always been kind of like inconsistent. Sometimes you know being there, sometimes not. Because he used to be, I think, after Neofrag, he was like the second best player in the country like last year. So I think I, I was expecting a little bit more out of him. So I'm just hoping that this continues. Okay. Well, let's kind of transition to the team they beat, right? Let's go over and talk a bit about G2, VP. And we can even roll Spirit into this. I know they're in separate groups, and I know that Group B isn't over yet. But Tapson, G2, Grand Final, Cologne, looking fucking great, right? They they finally get over a couple of their uh, the, the voodoo that has been stopping them in the past. They get a bit deeper in the event. We've been seeing more and more of that since Nico's joining. Things, you know, have been looking good, but... Now they come out of the break and they look like they're still either on holidays or, or what, what What are you going to put that down to? G2 starting this slowly. Like, even though you just said you think Sinners are a team who could, you know, take it against some of these better teams, G2, they got owned. Like, it wasn't even really that close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really hard to say what's happening for G2 right now. I think, I think it's something of, obviously, it's not, like it's not working properly right at the moment. Mm -hmm. I hope that they're not adopting themselves right now. I think they just need some time even to fix some stuff. Obviously, I also think, for example, a team like Sinners, I don't know if they also took vacations. G2, who plays like most of the year, they need to have some vacations. It need, takes some time also to get back into the shape, have all the call outs properly. Obviously, you have vacation. Maybe you have a week before, before officials again. Sometimes it's not uh, long enough. So you just need to make things right with the limited time you have. And obviously, I don't think they are satisfied at all with the, with the result what they are putting in. It's not even close what you said. Like against Sinners, it was not even close. They, they got outplayed. But obviously, G2 is a huge, it's a, it's a good team. They will definitely make it work. And I'm pretty sure they will also still make a good run in the, in the group. Yeah, one of their problems is they still have to play against VP. And I think if, if we yeah. look at VP as well, like no. Tabson, I want I want to stay with you for a second here, and then we'll get Prof and Striker to dissect what is going on with either of these teams. But do you like fall asleep at the keyboard when you're playing against VP? Like once Snoopy. you once you kill your Kinder, like is it like all right? Well, now we do <laughs> nothing for the next minute and a half. Absolutely. Like I think the playmaker obviously is your Kinder. If he doesn't do plays, then no one is doing plays. And I think it's also obviously it's easier easier said than done. Yeah, you say you can. Obviously, it's chill in the chair. It's like sit in the chair and watch the game. Are oh, they so bad here and there? Obviously, they have a system. Maybe it worked for them for a while. But obviously, if teams are just watching it, you know exactly what they are doing. And basically, I think James is a phenomenal upper. I don't know exactly what is like going on with the saving and stuff. Obviously, he wants to have the up for the next round. But they need to put some more like some energy in it, you know, <laughs> you need to be dangerous sometimes. You need to mix it up it's from here and there. Obviously, he can die. for the beginning of the year where he joined BP, he was outstanding. No one knew exactly what is going on. He was pushing through smokes. He was playing so aggressive. He was considered one of the most aggressive, best entries in the world at this time. And I think as well, I thought he was definitely one of the best entries in the world at this time. He was really successful. He was always going for the duels. You, you, knew, you knew he was going for it. And you didn't, you had no chance, basically. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Prof, are you are you with Tabs in there? You think that they've just been figured out because that seems to be the sentiment, right? If everybody knows what yeah. they're doing, you just hold on to your nades, you sit back, you don't give up a pick. Easy. To some degree, yeah. I think also Yakinder kind of dialed down his aggression to to a certain uh, point. Also, probably because people got caught on to what he does, right? And then they just gonna use utility to slow him down let's say dust two when he goes and takes cat control they just give cat control and then they just chill out for you know until that 45 second mark 30 second mark make some you know edge of the map pushes avoid the jam up you know where he likes to patrol where he likes to like hold those angles to get one or two kills mid mid late round and then when you go into these executions like uh if you watch the fours uh versus pro game on dust oh, two 
I mean, Force lost because their T side was awful, but their CT side, they felt like super comf comfortable about what was going on at all times. It seems so easy for them. Like, yeah, they lost some rounds here and there, but overall, it seemed like they had a perfect read on on what VP are doing on their on their T side. And if Force can do it, then G two can certainly do it. Then you know, Navi can do it. Then other teams can do it. Then this yeah. used to be, I mean, it still is a dangerous map for for VP uh, does too, but. You can't have one know. map. You can't have a yeah. one map pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, as well, like they build, build out on their city side, which still can be effective, but also they're kind of gambly on their city sides mm -hmm. in general and on Dust2 as well. So sometimes those things don't work out, right? That's kind of a coin, not a coin flip, but you know, it's it's gambly. Striker, with yep. all this being said, is Sanji in an abusive relationship with Jame and does <laughs> he need to break up with him? I mean, there, I feel like there has to be some sort of a change in that, right? Just because it's been a, it's almost been too long. And it's, I'm not even sure what to think of now, like looking back at when Virtus Pro actually were good. I'm not even sure if that's necessarily it was the why key they, factor them winning. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Because, like, if you think about it now, like, sure, like, Ekendor has definitely slowed down. Like, that's 100% the case. And you can even tell that people are just much more aware of what, uh, what he's doing. And so, like, at that point, you're just going to start doubting yourself. You're not going to go for the same plays if you're Ekendor, that kind of stuff. And, like, if you don't have that guy who's just going to be the playmaker and, like, constantly getting you entries or even openings, even if he dies, like, a lot of the time, he just creates the space and just, like, the information that the team needs. So they could make the make some of those decisions based on him, even if he died. But at this point, if you're if he's just like a 50-50 entry, like they just don't have that guy right anymore, right? So that's uh, that's kind of like where I don't want to put it all, all in the Akindar because I don't think it is because like Tapson said, like it's their entire playstyle being basically based on this, and that's uh, that's for blame. Uh, that's for blame for this. But let's let's think about this, right? I know it's all gone all the way back to 2019, but they made a major grand final, right? Kick it and Buster a two or at least were, two individuals who could contribute. Now, we have Yukinda who goes. If he doesn't, nobody else feels like they're attempting anything, or if they do, they're already down a man. Like, I'm watching Yukinda take space on his own, and nobody even throwing grenades to set him up. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I was baffled, right, how much space they were, first of all, being able to get with just Yukinda running around the map on Dusty. That was impressive. I was like, holy shit, they've used one flash, and Yukinda's up cat at a minute 30, right? Like, sure, that's, it has to do with how fours are playing as well, but they're getting a lot of space, they're not setting, like, how are they not using any nades to facilitate him to get an entry kill? If he's already mechanically so good, you can't just, it's not, he's not playing a fucking FPL game where he runs out with some utility that he's been fucking around with in a server to go get an opening kill and then maybe get a multi. He's playing against good, well-organized teams. Like, why are they not setting him up? He's already very good at entry fragging. I remember at one point we did an interview, I think it was with Kicker, and they spoke about the fact that Buster and kick it and your kinder can all go for entry kills well right now it doesn't look that way no. like i mean they can you know they, well, they can. don't but they don't but they don't yeah why it's just a decision it's not their cap capabilities right it's not that they don't have players capable of going for entries like kicker and buster before your kinder were both capable of doing you know pushing up short on, on dust yeah. two with a couple of smokes and finding those entries you know headshot angles and all of that so it's not about it's just like how they want to play and with that you know how much space people are giving them early on because they know they're not going to do anything with it. If they could abuse that, you know, change the, throw in these different rounds, they could do a shit ton. I feel like yeah, you could just walk up, up short and execute or do like a, I don't know, contact out, out on a early on a couple of times per, per map. And that could fuck up a lot of teams. This team is happy reincarnated as five players. <laughs> right? Four players. They are they are so one dimensional that they are like happy, right? Like we all knew that Happy was going to one bomb site on his own, and the rest of the team was going to the other side. Happy could have done this. He could have gone in first, had four guys behind him. He could have died, and then they all could have run in, and nobody would have expected it. Tabs, what, what what are you putting this down to? Is it, who's even in game leading over there? Is it Jame? I don't I don't even know who's in game leading at the moment. It's all over the place. Like why? I think why it's would Jame. They... Like they didn't say anything. Yeah, I believe so, so Jame. Yeah. So why are they, why would a team be so stubborn, Tabs? And is it because they're still like, or at least I don't know what the new rankings say, but they were like top five recently, right? They're still top five. They're still fifth. Like if you're fifth in the world and you're playing like this, like maybe that's why they're getting this weird confirmation bias. Mm, I believe it's something when, when you always do the same thing. For example, like Kikat or like Sanji or whoever is going for the entries, and you don't, you are not successful with it. At some point, you as the in-game leader, at least for my case, it's like, hey. Listen, you didn't do it so often. You did it 
quite often you were not so successful let's maybe keep it a little bit down mm. so you are not going for the kills you are supposed to do obviously in practice you make the kills in practice everyone challenges you in practice you have some duels we never have in official games basically so i think it's something like hey you can we need you you need to step up your game hey i cannot do it by my own and now they are a little bit stuck and obviously I don't think James is this kind of in-game leader who coordinates, micromanages everything everything in quite a second. So basically, I think this is the kind of in-game leader. Hey, we need this room. Okay, we have this room now. Let's create something. Now they have execute A, execute B, obviously, execute mid maybe. And that for this kind of um, situations, they of course need some room to have. Mm. And if they don't have this kind of room, hey, James, where is my call? Yeah, but bro, I don't have the room to do, to do my call. So they are basically a little bit stuck with the own playstyle, but obviously it's really hard to, as we talked about, if you want to change a little bit, you don't have time to do so. You need to also practice these kind of things. If you practice that, then you have practiced enemies who are always blocking you so hard. You never get the room you want to do something. You know, you're like everyone, everyone's been there and basically you just need to deal with the things that you have. Mm. And it's sometimes rough. Okay. Well, hopefully they can solve the puzzle, right? Because what was it? There was an article the other day from with the CEO of VP saying if they don't make it or the mate, they're gonna wait for the major yeah. and then change a striker, right? So it was a GM, but yeah, yeah, uh, the GM. Okay, and at the moment, I was just looking at it the other day in terms of the RMR event. They're on the cusp. They're sixth. Only the top five from the CIS make it, right? We do have one more RMR event to go, so it's not like they can't make it. But like they just lost to Fours, and Fours is fifth, and they're sixth, right? So. Uh, what do you reckon, Striker? If you had to, if you had to guess, you think VP are going to make the major with how they're playing right now? Um, I would say, especially considering their issues against the CS teams at this point, that could be. Uh, I they mean, fours, last fours one, in right? gen fours in general have been kind of a pain in their ass for for a while. I think they lost something like the last three out of four encounters against them, even though fours weren't exactly in their best form mm. throughout all this time. So I think that's kind of like the matchup that we might be judging a little bit too harshly. But considering the first game they played against OG, they just completely yeah. That, that was just a super one-sided game. There was nothing to be said about VP even then, uh, even in that one. So that's the one that I was looking at and thinking, okay, that might be a problem because they just didn't turn up, right? But oh. it's kind of the same thing as with G2. Maybe it's just a, maybe it's just like early jitters or like just being being rusty a little bit because like if you look at G2, they just don't have three players playing at their highest capacity at this point. They just have Hunter and Nico. <laughs> I, just, I thought you were just going to stop there. They don't have three players playing. It's just Nico and Hunter. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it is just Nico and Hunter essentially like putting up the numbers that they uh, need to, for, to be we can back that up. But we can back that up with some stats, right? Just so people don't yeah, think right. that you're, you're fucking overblowing I mean, that one. Right 0.76 me... Jags, 0 0.80 Amonic, 0 0.81 Nexa, and then let, Hunter 1.06. Let's put it in. Let's put it in numbers for dummies here. Let me find the series that I was looking for. I think it was the OG one. Over two maps of Counter Strike, Amanek and Jax both only had 15 kills. Not good. No. That right there, over two maps of Counter Strike, let me say it again Amanek and Jax both only had 15 kills. Now you divide 15 by two, guys. I know you don't get a round bloody number, but that's, that's some, some sponge level shit stats right there. Like that, what, that's, that's really bad. Like, uh, like I normally don't look at stats and go, man, that, that's, but that's, for a team, that's really rough. Yeah, that's not that's not good. Like that's what are you meant to do? I saw Malik looking like a like a really disappointed dad on the webcams there. I, I look G two or VP can still turn this around and qualify for the playoffs, but this is just bad signs. Like to to come out of the break, we all know, right? It's a it's not a long break. Like we all know that. Like, but it just it just seems really rough. It feels like OG, who we haven't even started talking about yet, mm -hmm. had their break and they've come out ready to fucking stuff their belly full of Counter Strike Ws, and G two are still feeling bloated from Cologne. Right? Is there maybe a bit of that? Does anyone think that maybe they are not resting on their laurels, but they were just here? Now we're back online. You're trying to balance out these. Do we like? Do we think this is this team is going to have these problems going forward, or are they going to slowly shrug this off and return? Does it, does anybody have a hot take on that? Like, I don't think this is the G two that we're that we should expect moving forward. Like in general, I just I think this is just kind of like a the rust that I was talking about. That like, sure, they've always had like the issue of not having like enough reliable players. Essentially, like this just happens every now and again with like some of their players with like one of those three or maybe two of those three in the in the same series. But if it's mm -hmm. three all three at the same time, and maybe Hunter isn't like. The, the most amazing in the most amazing form they're just gonna have problems like they just don't have like at some point if you don't frag enough like you're just not, not gonna get the rounds like that's basically how it works even if obviously there's much more complicated like it's much more complicated than that so like 
that's that's what I'm looking at at least. I don't expect all three of the players will just not turn up in any series. Like I, I think moving forward, at least some of them will step They'll up slowly every now step and again. Up. Mm-hmm. I, I think Amanek was buying the AWP a lot for somebody who doesn't necessarily need to buy the AWP. What what do you think, Tabs? Do you think like obviously you guys have Sirius, so it's different, right? He's a fantastic star level AWPA. G2 don't have a star level AWPA. We saw Liquid be successful in an era where they didn't really Nitro did it on the CT side. Stewie picked it up occasionally. Naf used it every every now and again. Do you think that G2 are a team who can operate at least on their T sides where they don't necessarily need that AWP? Um, yeah, definitely. I think Amanek is definitely a good good opa. He definitely has some skills, mechanics to do damage for the op. But I believe like back in the days when we had no op, like it was before Smuya was in the team, mm-hmm. I used to op. And I know for myself, like being not an opera for a whole t- for the whole time, you cannot do things like an opera should do, and it's really hard playing against the top team in the world or playing against good players in the world. And if you are not a real opera and you are not comfortable with the op, you need to contact sometimes. You need to be able to clutch. You need to be able to entry and stuff like that. So I think it's really hard to maintain this kind of level and obviously also to step up for your team as an opera. You need to do that sometimes. You need to have your team in your back and you need to say to them, hey, look, I'm here. Obviously, Amanek can do that, but I believe also Amanek used to be a star rifle. He can out aim anyone like if they make maybe some kind of a moves he can maybe entry he can start do stuff like that but i believe they are just comfortable with the system right now and obviously amanek is a good opera in my eyes he, he he's doing his job really good okay uh prof we were talking about this before with vitality and we were saying that uh we feel like something's off right do you feel like with g2 even though they just made it to the final right even though they've been looking more and more threatening do you think that there is something off with G2 or do you think the recipe that they have right now is a team that could win big trophies? I I know I'm putting you under the under the pump here. But I want uh... to say that I have like more faith in G2 potentially winning like a big trophy than Zaiwu. Then Zaiwu. Oh, okay. Then Zaiwu. Okay. But then <laughs> I thought then I thought Zaiwu, right? True. Uh, so I'm not really sure about that. And also I thought G2 has the history of not winning almost, especially in these like last last couple of matches. That's in League where of they... Legends as well now. So. Uh, yeah, but but CSGO, you know, the, they made top four last couple of tournaments since they brought in Jax, which is nice, but they also didn't win some of them and they failed some of the matches where you thought they should should be good or be more competitive. So I'm not really sure, not really sure about this one. Okay. It's very difficult. I think. We saw Amanek be really good uh, as this opera, like really like over, not serviceable, but more than serviceable. We saw Jax have his crazy peaks and we know Hunter and uh, Nico are insane. So that's covered. Nexa, okay. I think with that, they have more of these, let's say, uh, how, how do I say it? More wildly variable uh, players that could okay. peak at the same time to give them a trophy than I see on Vitality because I don't see, yeah. you know, Kyojin, Apex going in some like insane level, even Shocks the last six months, I didn't really see a lot of crazy tournaments out of him. So yeah. I think they have that maybe, you know, if everything aligns, then they could be insane. But I think, I think they both played... have... Oh, yeah, go ahead. go ahead. I think Misuda played a nice tournament so far, yeah. right? Yeah, Misuda is being like growing into this like second star. Second role. star for sure, yeah. yeah. What about this? Yeah, go for Shaga. I mean, I think there's, I think there's a lot of similarities between those two teams, and the same, like in the same way with what I was talking about with G two. There's just not enough reliable players on Vitality, right? Like you just don't have, you don't always have three guys turning up essentially, and that's the same with G two and Vitality. Like most okay. teams will will usually have three people who are pretty consistent, right? And maybe two people like the entry fragger is always going to be kind of like the inconsistent, inconsistent player on the team, right? But the rest of them are at least are generally going to be able to. To, to put up certain numbers, right? But like, if you look at both G2, especially with, if you look at Jax and Amonic, like both of them can have really good series, but they can also both just disappear. And that, I think, is a, is a problem if you have like two or three players like that on the same team. Well, imagine... It's, yeah, so go I, I personally think it's really hard to have three players hitting at the same time. I think Navi is the only team in the world who was able, was able to right. also no, yeah. hit like Electronic, now Bit, who played... What of, kind of tournament was that? Like his first land tournament, and he plays 
insane basically yeah mm. and then of course you have simple you have perfecto who's one of the best in my opinion like side holders who can play by himself basically yeah for example on dust 2b he plays really really well yeah and obviously you have boomblich who is just training just making room creating some chaos and i think navi is basically in my eyes the, the only team in the world who consistently puts up numbers with at least three players yeah but i mean the, i'm just talking about the disparity right because oh, like yeah. if you have a guy if you have a guy who's just going to be able to turn up and and just destroy the entire series but then the next one he disappears it's just yeah. not something you can rely on right like yeah, and yeah. if you have two Absolutely. guys like that that's an issue i mean it's also consistency wise yeah yeah the, the difference between what what spun says you know 15 kills from two of them and over two maps in the same series a, instead of being like 22 kills both you know it, that's that's all already a big difference in ter terms of winning a couple of key rounds that can that can help you propel them i know legia is in the chat he says gambit also has three oh, which, yeah. I Hobbit, think, Shira, yeah. which yeah. you can you can agree Ooh. with yeah there's actually a question in chat i'll i'll send this to absence way okay i don't think it's really serious but at the same th at the same time maybe smuya in g2 what do you say <laughs> oh they, they. I mean, I think they need an opper. If they could find a good opper, they'd, they'd sign him, right? And this is a guy that's going to be free fairly soon. Could it work? <laughs> I think it is something which could fit for sure. Like, they need someone who's aggressive. Like, for example, Kenny is, used to be. Um, Smuya is this kind of opper for sure. He can create chaos. He's also very good with the op. I think it can definitely work. Depending, of course, if the personality fits and stuff like that, if they if the chemistry is there, definitely can work. Why not? But I also see it, at this time, you need to be able also no like no uh, f like no um, no shooting fire towards Owen, obviously. But you need to also play be able to play on the system. And sometimes you as an opera, you are limited, even though you think like, hey, I need to do this. Sometimes you as a as a part of the system, you need to also like stick sometimes in the back and be able to be part of the system and just don't do the move and you need to also do sometimes more of the passive parts and this is something i think if owen is able to like do this kind of things I'm pretty sure this could definitely work for g2 yeah i think if anything like they don't want an aggressive opera just because the the, the setup that they have currently mm -hmm. like stylistically you'd almost want demonic to be the opera but obviously like he'd need to be more consistent more like yeah. you know if, if you put shiro in this team obviously like it's it's an entirely different conversation right but like they have so much aggression on that team that like Nexa and Amonic are basically like the only supportive elements mm -hmm. that you just kind of need the passive opera style that's kind of just going to fill in the gaps and be able to kind of like be the supportive guy to the two two people in front. So I so, think an aggressive okay. opera would almost be bad for them. KDs or Fallen? Or, or what Fallen. Are you, you guys are thinking outside the box here. We have to bait Carlos, who's obviously he wants to buy big players, right? We have to bait Carlos again, right? But we can <laughs> solve by... We can solve Vitality's problems and we can solve G2's problems all at once. Carlos keeps Nico and Hunter. He buys Zaiwu and Masuta, takes the best parts of G2 and the best parts of Vitality, mushes them together, and then I don't care who he gets to the fifth. Tabson, you can go and you can in-game lead. That'll work perfectly. <laughs> Tabson can in-game lead. We got Nico and Hunter over there. We got Masuta and Zaiwu. That seems like a pretty good team, right? And Carlos has got a lot of money. He's probably going to have to sell off his entire League of Legends team right now and do some whole new rebuilding. He can use some money on Counter Strike, and there we go. There we got a good team. Is there any any objections? No, the, the tabs and part I don't like, but <laughs> no, otherwise what, nah. we need an in-game leader. And we need a fragging in-game leader. Not the not big in-game leader, so okay. you can get someone else. All right. Well, we're we'll trying. I mean, okay. Nexa might as well stay if you're getting those two players, to be honest. All right, all right, all right. We can keep Nexa there. All right, so the other one who we kind of skipped over before was Spirit. So let's quickly dip back to them. This is just for you. Yeah, okay. So I got hyped on Spirit, right? So this is the thing, Tabson. I spent my entire player break playing as much Counter-Strike as I possibly could and watching as many streams as I possibly could. So I got on the Magic's hype train, him and Dexter and... All the boys, Mir, they're out there playing FPL every day. And I'm sitting there telling myself, they're going to hit the ground running. They're going to come into EPL. They're going to be informed. They're going to be looking fucking sick. Spirit are here. They're going to dominate, right? Day one, they lose to Astralis. I jumped off that hype train quicker than I could have fucking jumped <laughs> off anything. They look like the same team, right, who's disappointed me in the past. They have all these skilled individuals. Dexter, Mir, Magix. Those three right there sound like it should be a sick little combination. But for whatever reason... And I can't put my finger on it. It has to be their approach to the game. They can't seem to make it work. 
they can't seem to they look lost in certain scenarios they're tripping over themselves I, I, I don't know what it is do you do you have any takes on spirit tabson by any chance absolutely i always personally felt like spirit was for sure a very good coordinated team like i it was always fun to play against this kind of team they always played serious also in practice i felt like they also practiced very hard we had a period of time where we always played against them in official games like we had many many games against them and there was always a battle of winning and losing against them and then at some point we had the upper hand against them it was more about also what you said i think like preparing the game how you see the game i think they're very individually high skilled players like dexter he i don't know where where the people are coming from but they are so individually high skill and i believe that something is missing i don't know what i believe also chopper is a very good good player also a very good teammate to have i think he looks nice he looks like a teddy bear and he's for, for sure i think <laughs> really like he's a really hyped guy to play with and i don't know what's missing basically but i always always believe they play good counter strike mm. it, it's it's weird I, I i can't work i look Part of me thinks it must be a, a leadership thing. And, and you were just saying Chopper, yeah, he could be a fun guy to play with. But uh, let's let we would do. I was I was having a conversation with the boys in Discord about this the other day. And I was actually having it with Machine on the way home after Spirit lost another series. And I was like, I feel like they just need a new in-game leader. You know, they have some skilled players, maybe bring in a new leader. And we were like, who can they get? And Machine suggested um, Jerry. And we were having this chat the other day. And um like we, you guys have all seen jerry recently if you've been watching epl doing the interviews he's a very uh, personable type guy very you know always gives very good answers in the interviews that he does and um i reckon we just get jerry and flit from uh fours put them in the place of chopper and uh, sdy this you know this this show we should change the name we should just call it fix any team thread <laughs> right? like we've seen playing that's what we'll do fix any team we'll fix any team Put Jerry, <laughs> put Flit, add them with Magic's Mirror and Dexter, and there we go. We got a team. I don't know. We won't dwell on Spirit for too long. It's I mean, that, that would be a sick team. Let's let's be real. That would be a sick team. Honestly, just be pretty sick. We um, just need to get the the CIS contracts in order. Not gonna happen. So. That's usually pretty rough. Okay. Way too many good about, CIS players. Yeah, that's you the know, problem. You, if you think about it, that's like Zaiwu and and uh, and Misuta going to G two on one hand, you know, and on the other hand, you have two CIS players. Not even that in that amazing of a team going to another team. It seems like the same kind of yeah. Process, it doesn't I think. Yeah. I mean, okay. I think that's how like God or uh, some like higher entity wants to balance out the talent pool that CIS has right now. Like, imagine if they actually made all of these transfers all the time. Mm. It would be insane. Like, if instead of Perfecto, Navi gets Flit, who was at the time like who they wanted to get. The, all of these transfers happened if. You know, Mir went to Virtus Pro. Like these, these teams would be even more insane. So that's true. Th it has to be locked separately because it'd be too powerful if it was okay. in one point. I don't I like think. that excuse, but fair enough. We won't touch on the bad news, better stuff because I don't really feel like getting my cup out and shaking it this evening. So um, we'll <laughs> leave the the charity for another show. Oh, okay. um, well, we can we can if you want. No, what do you no, want to no, no, say? No, no. What do I we want just, to say? I didn't want to say anything. I was just. Try to work out what that uh, what the phrase that you just said meant. Yeah, we got I thought it was uh, old man yells at cloud. I yeah, thought that was the meme that you were going for, <laughs> but okay. That too. Okay, let's talk about OG because they've looked bloody great. Um, I think OG, since they added Flames and Nico, uh, people forget when the OG roster formed, like I originally, I thought it was trash. I thought nothing was ever going to come of it, right? And I think the fact that they were as competitive as they were with MBK and Issa was surprising because there just wasn't enough firepower on that team. And I thought there were way too many cooks in the bloody kitchen. Now with Flames and Nico, I think it actually makes a lot of sense. Mantu became this individual, this this player. Like, think about Mantu. He come from nowhere and he is sick. Like, watch Mantu play. When does he make a mistake? When does he look flustered? Mantu, for me, is like one of the greatest finds in the last couple of years. I think this new OG roster can be really good. Now, obviously, they're another one of these teams who fall into that same bucket we were talking about with Heroic before. They didn't have the best Cologne. They lost to Renegades within the play-ins. And now they're looking like really good in the first couple of games here within EPL. Tabson, let's start with you. This team, are they somebody that you come uh, across a lot in practice? Do you think that they, like, first of all, do you think that this is an upgrade from the old OG? And do you think that this team can be competitive within the, the realms of the top five? Absolutely. I believe Flames is a very promising player. He has the talent to make things work. And obviously, I think Nico is also the player who they needed. He's kind of a guy who's MBK, only in a better way. He's the, doing the dirty job. He's also playing way more aggressive in this kind of sense where he makes also more kills. 
And I think you always need to have players who make dirty jobs. And I think Nico especially is doing a very good job at that point. But I believe also OG is this kind of team who also watches a lot. They also try to figure out new things. And obviously they have Mantu, what you said. Like, I think he's one of the most promising oppas we have at the moment in the scene. Like he came out of nowhere. He played with our coach back in the days in alternate attacks. And he also smashed teams there. And he kept go kept doing it. And he's still doing it. And I believe at some point he can also do much, much better things than maybe in different teams or maybe OGs figuring this stuff out, what they need to do. And at this time, they're looking promising. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if uh, maybe I'm overhyping them after these first two results because it, it could come down to a bit of G2 being slow out the gates, right? Mm. But well, do, do we think that they're just a bit more hungry, boys? Like, what do we what do we think's going on with OG? Do we think maybe they didn't live up to their potential in Cologne? It's still hard to diagnose, right? Like, I, I, I can see the promise in the roster, mm. I just don't I just don't know like I guess we need to be sold a little bit more striker what do you think Yeah I mean I think these two these couple of games in EPL are a little bit misleading just because of like especially the way that the, the Virtus Pro series went if you remember Dust 2 how they basically just kept running into Nico and he was just killing them all every single time it didn't matter like what angle they took it could have been a split or it could have been just from cat and it's he just destroyed them every time and this is not the type of Nico that you're going to get every single series so it's this is just not something that you can expect from him in particular so maybe that series was a little bit was a bit of an overperformance from from OG in general uh, and also kind of i i feel like it was just a, a a big mistake from from vp in terms of their game plan it's just uh they just tried to keep uh, try to keep sticking to one plan and it just didn't work right yeah. so uh, from that angle i think we can't expect everybody to be at this level individually from the team so i think they're just going to slow down a little bit but i think they're still very solid that's the context I'm missing here, Prof. There, it was VP and G2, the two heaviest hitters yeah, in the group. Yeah. So it's not mm -hmm. just two best of threes. It's the two best teams in the group that they've already beaten. So should be clear sailing for them to qualify, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I didn't really watch that many of their, of their matches. Both of them were pretty short. And I was like, oh, I'll catch the second, third map. And then Very I came in. And it was like five more rounds and it was done. So unfortunate from that point of view. Uh, so I don't really have a lot of insight in the actual games, how they went, ex except that like <laughs> running into Nico on Dust 2, which was pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, I think they are a team that went out early from Cologne. Uh, they had they went on a break early, came back maybe a bit earlier. And on the other hand, we have G2 and VP who went in the playoffs. So the, just the opposite really the opposite example of it and it's something that to some degree matters to some degree it doesn't we really don't know how it affects certain teams we know spirit went practice through the like played a lot of fpl so they sucked as well so you can't really yeah. put, put a lot of stock into it and it's kind of random but look i picked for my fantasy team two g2 players two vp players thinking oh they <laughs> went into like, great form uh and i'll just pick this junior guy maybe he does something <laughs> So I'm literally last out of all people that played fantasy this uh, this this game. Mine's pretty bad too. That's and then I bad. then I'm thinking about like I'm I'm so stupid. Like these are the teams that played the longest. They are gonna come back probably not that hyped. OG need to have something to prove. G2 and VP not that much. Maybe VP, but G2 certainly don't have anything to prove. Almost at at EPL, except maybe win a tournament. But that's obviously not in the in the and in their pocket, I guess. Mm. So I don't know. I think that that is a big fact, not a big factor, but a significant factor to like the difference between OG and uh, G2 VP. And if G2 make the playoffs, as Tapson said, completely possible. I think they can in the playoffs still do uh, an amazing job because the playoffs are in two weeks. So For it's sure. going to be almost like a different tournament. Completely. But I, I think one thing, and, and Tabson, you can probably attest to this, right, is that not all tournaments are weighted the same for everybody, right? For OG to come into this year, uh, this second half of the year and be performing well is going to mean better for them in the run into the major than it is for G2 who go, oh, it's not great, right? We, we did really good in Cologne. We're kind of struggling a bit here, but we know we can get to this level, right? Do, do you look at it that way, that certain teams have more to gain uh, in these type of events? 100%. Like some teams have everything to lose, some teams have nothing to lose in these kind of events. And I think also OG is one of the teams who have basically not so much to lose. They just play to win, obviously. But for example, G2, they have everything to lose in this kind of groups. You, As everyone knows, they need to perform. Obviously, if you are a little bit rusty, there are people who play more freedom. You are back online again. You know how, how the circumstances are, of course. 
and I think OG is doing the right thing. They feel uh, probably really fresh. They're also in the boot camp. They're doing the nice stuff. Things they are ready to grind. They are ready to take the group series, and I believe they will also make the first place. And I also believe G2 for them it needs to be a wake up call. Nothing is still lo lost yet for G for OG as well. I sit in this sho their shoes at this mo at this time because we also played uh, EPL. Uh, I don't know what season it was. We managed to beat Navi and Fnatic, and then afterwards we lost all three games and we got last in the group. Okay, and then I think like remember that. <laughs> yeah, I believe like OG. You still need to grind. You still need to win every game it's as as much as possible, like, for example, Heroic did. And, of course, same goes for G2. Nothing is lost yet. You can still make it. You just need to play game by game. Everything is possible. You need to be able to play your highest level, obviously, in the most important time. And I believe they will make it. Okay. I think EPL is a little bit deceptive as an event, uh, especially being the first of the new season. Because it's obviously a big tournament if you look at the whole thing, because it's like a 750,000 prize pool. It's basically like one of the biggest that we have uh, on the calendar at this point. But at the same time, like a lot of a lot of teams, I imagine, just go into the groups thinking, okay, we have five games. You know, you kind of have some time to ramp up. If we're a little bit slow out, out of the gates, it's going to be fine. We still have a bunch of games to go. And that's like usually how the favorites look at the ESL Poly groups, especially if it's the first event going uh, going into the new season. So. That's kind of what I'm talking about. I when I'm talking about like a deceptive event, like for a lot, especially for the favorites, it's always going to be kind of like the warm up event or like the warm up group stage. While for OG, it's it's basically like their real shot that's you know making the next step up, right? So yeah, it's uh, 100 percent agree with what you were saying with uh with the term of being weighted differently for the different teams. Yeah, that's one thing I think uh, you know it is almost year round with different tournaments, right? So uh, let, let's jump forward, guys. Let's get into uh, the group C and D stuff, and we're going to lose tabs in at about 10:30. So we're going to get into this parry match match make a game prof uh do we have yes. the links handy here Stri uh, i was gonna say striker lucas do you have the links handy send them over so we got another little game for you here tabs and this one here uh is basically lucas will send you a link yeah. there is how many options do we have now prof do you want to introduce this one yeah this uh i wanted to make it like topical since we we're going to talk about uh, group c and e Okay. Um, we're going to go with all of the Group C themes, which is Navi, Phase, Big Mouse, Sports, EG, and Fnatic. Okay. And we're going to use uh, use Tabson to get his like thoughts on how he thinks the groups are is going to go. Right. Nice. So, with uh, all of these, with yeah, with every team, you have to select at least one answer, and can be can be multiple answers, can be uh, I don't know, multiple same answers for different teams, but. You know, try to diversify and see what you think. Yeah, just talk us through your thought process here, Tabson. Well, let's go. Let's go from the top to the bottom, right? It's Navi. It's everyone the same, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I believe, obviously, Navi is um, the biggest shot here, right? They will make the top of the group 100%. Like, not so much to talk about it, right? Okay, I you think they're so. going to come out of the break with, with the good form? 100%. Okay, yeah, 100%. Nice. They will put on the work. And even if not, you have Simple in the team. He will manage, he will make sure that they will be one of the best teams in the group. And I believe also they they will be so confident they know what they are doing right and they will just smash everyone in the group. And of course not big, but we will see how about that. Phase? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, interesting phase. one, isn't it? Yeah. I I believe they had a really, really good run in Cologne. Yeah. Of obviously it was LAN, they are very experienced. But I, I believe online, uh, online they had some troubles with the teams they've played. Maybe some random pushes here and there. They hadn't, they, they didn't focus so much on them. But I believe they will also be well prepared. And obviously, I think they will, they will have good impression for sure. But I don't know if they make playoffs. To be honest, I don't think so. Let you me can skip. You, you can skip it and come back later when you figure out. Like okay, okay. I, I wanted to pose it to you this way, Tabson, right? If you're FaZe, right, and they had those woes online, right? They knew that online teams were doing things that we you know don't get away with on LAN, right? But then they go to LAN and then they play really, they, they play above the level everybody was expecting. Do you think they use that confidence in the way that goes, oh, yeah, we can compete. It doesn't matter if it's online or LAN. Or do you think they use it and go, well, we can compete, but we can only compete on LAN and now we're going back to online. Do you think they use it as a positive or a negative? I wish that they use it as a positive, uh, but I think they will get back to the reality very quickly if they take it as a negative, because on, online, everything can happen, man. You, you don't know what happens, man. You make a nice call. Finn is a really good in-game leader. Obviously, he has really 
he has un everything under control, but you know, that something can happen which you don't have on the radar and everything crashes, crumbles, and then he looks like the worst in-game leader in the world. But basically, I believe they will be prepared. They will put up a great show for sure. They have good individual players. Obviously, I think Twist is one of the best thrower in, in the team. They will He will be also very good, I believe, And but I don't think they will make playoffs. Okay. Okay. All right. What about your own team? What do you want to leave yourself till last? Um, I can. I just leave us to last. Yeah? Okay, that's okay. fine. That's fine. Let's go. Okay. Let's go next. Mouse. Mouse? Yeah, mouse. That's a weird team. Yeah, I don't know where we put them. They're very inconsistent, aren't they? Yeah, very inconsistent. I think it's mostly all about Robs in my eyes. Like mm -hmm. Robs and Frozen, obviously. Frozen had an amazing show the last few couple of tournaments, I think. He used to have his best tournament ever, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And he plays really, really well. But I don't I, I don't know what to expect from them, to be honest. I didn't see so much. Obviously, uh, in Cologne, they didn't have the best show. But I don't know. I, don't know. I, think, I think, to be honest, they will be bottom of the group. Ooh, okay. 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 All right. This okay. is this is interesting. Are we, sure like this? Are we sure about that? Well, no, because look, we've got EG and Fnatic that's to go I'm, now. So maybe he I'm knows something about, about EG yeah. and Fnatic we don't. Yeah. EG I, EG yeah. have a stand in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. EG are playing with so, Okay, let's go. So uh wise man once said it was Gobelante, Gobi, yeah. If you have nothing to lose, basically if you play with the stand in, you play for fun and you have nothing to lose. That's the best way how to play Counter Strike. Okay. You have nothing to lose. Basically, Debs as a stand-in, he can jump on the server. He can do whatever he wants to, if he wants to. He can also just feed and just make them look really bad. But I believe they will have a lot of fun. They will just enjoy themselves. And I don't believe they want to, like, the, I don't believe they will go to the tournament. Obviously, they want to win, but I don't see them as a favorite. I don't see them, hey, we will be first in the group. But I, I believe they will come in the tournament. Hey, let's have so much fun like we never had before. Like, just enjoy the moment while it lasts. Mm. So I basically think they can maybe surprise with one or two matches here and there. I don't think they will be, obviously, in the playoffs. But I don't think they will be bottom of the group. And therefore, uh, as I good. said, I... Good impression, I guess. Good yeah. impression, yeah. Well, you, stick with this conspiracy theory for a second with me guys so now that this whole thing is manifested and daps has come back in and stan's taking some time off this is what happens now this is how the story arc continues there we go okay. now that daps <laughs> gets to spend some personal time with breeze and cirque he returns them to the nrg form that they were in where they were the two best players in nrg when daps was in game leading and then stan swoops in he comes back makes his return right me who's still fucking popping off, owning everybody, Cirque and Breeze are now fucking locked and loaded. The team's looking good. And then Obo, yeah, I forgot about Obo. He's getting shit done as well. Daps goes back <laughs> to the coaching role. They win an event and Stan returns and uh, everything's looking good for EG again. This is going to be early next year. This is this is the prophecy. Early next year, this all manifests. How does, we... how does FNS come into this picture? <laughs> oh, no, you wait. Wait till Valorant is on its last legs. It's not I thought I thought this was going to be like a backstab story like you know, Stanislav here is like, oh, yeah, let's get back to work, guys. And it's like, ah, uh, no, no. It's just like Daps stabs him in the back. Over like, the you're out. Daps <laughs> remains the in-game leader. And then FNS joins as coach and they win the second major for NA. Oh, I don't shit. know if it's, FNS it's not even, is it, is it an NA team? One, two. Yeah, yeah it would be yeah. an NA team with yeah. Daps. So all good, right? All right that, I like it. Plan. I like that. All right, yeah. so we got Fnatic here, Tabs. And have you, you think? Well, I guess they're in your group. You probably haven't practiced them at all, have you? No, we haven't practiced them. And any have... Hunden type rumors coming on through? <laughs> no. Okay. But all I, right. I don't know. Like I believe, obviously, Alex is a good in-game leader, and mm. um, Messi definitely has something to put up. And obviously, the, all the Swedish players on the team, Crims and stuff. I believe they can make something work, but I don't know if it's enough. If it's enough time to to make it work. I believe they can in future have a decent team who can also make maybe playoffs here and there, maybe win the tournament. There are, there are th players capable of winning tournaments, obviously, but I believe it's not, not the right time yet. And I'm, I'm, I will be surprised if they manage to get out of playoffs, to be honest, but I definitely, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to actually see them play, but I'm, I don't know. I think good, good impression, but not making playoffs, I think. Okay. So, so big, big, easy playoffs overall. Deep playoff run here. Deep playoff run, I feel Deep like, playoff me. run. 
Yeah, okay. If if I if I can multi multi how do you say it? Like if I can choose yeah, I can multiple multi, question yeah. Uh, yeah. tasks, then obviously Navi will be deep in the playoffs as well. Okay. Like hundred yeah. percent. And for us as a big, I think we will make playoffs. It will be bad impression and good impression at the oh. same time. <laughs> 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 and it's a possibility to make deep in playoffs, but it's depending on how the tournament is, how the flow evolves, and how we feel all. I think we can make it, but at this time, I think we make playoffs. It, people will say bot here and there. People say got here and there. So basically, <laughs> everything involved. <laughs> okay. what, what, what about this, Tabson, right? So Na'Vi, right? We'll put them on a pedestal on their own, right? But we know that you just mentioned that FaZe, we don't know. Maybe good, maybe bad. Mao's you've got them here you don't think they're going to do two crash hot and eg and Fnatic are unknowns who out of those names other than navi that i just listed do you think is going to be the hardest team for big to beat i think mouse okay i think even though they will not be like one of the best teams in the group i think they are still obviously a very good team like do you have individual players who can win by themselves rob's frozen obviously dexter also insanely good yeah but i believe I think there's something missing in this team. Like, I don't know what it's missing. Obviously, you have Rob, one of the best players in the world, one of the best lurkers, clutchers in the world. Entries, obviously, if he wants to make it right. And for example, you, he lets his play, uh, lets his team play outside alone. He goes hard in, just search duels, and he makes always makes the right decision somehow. Mm. But I believe if if everything works like according to the plan, I think uh, we should be able to beat them. And obviously, I think they, it will be a really tough game mentally, obviously, because we have like a rivalry against each other, not the players itself, but obviously the organization. I've been, to, I've been, I've been playing to, for mouse pods for a long, long time and obviously many players in the organization. But obviously, it's a nice rivalry and it's always putting some fire into my ass. Like, I want to <laughs> beat this kind of teams. Okay. So, so now everything, like people in chat are confused, like, Oh, they're gonna be hard to beat, but they're gonna be bottom of the group. But that's <laughs> essentially you saying like, "Fuck these guys! I hate this organization." <laughs> so they're gonna go last, and that's it. So it's like, I, it makes it makes sense. <laughs> <for me now. laughs> All right. Well, uh, Tabson, I've been told you need to go at ten thirty, which is in about yeah. two minutes' time. So we let's do this because I'm sure we had a bunch of questions. Is there any prof that is stand out that we can ask within two minutes uh, that were like highlight questions? Maybe for we can go to play playtime, ask him like two questions and then kind of wrap up the well, show. Don't worry about the bumper because it's going to take too long. So let's yeah. do this quick. We got, if we got anything, we'll just pop them off and then let we'll me just open, down. open the thing. There is one question. Let me just find it. Okay. Okay. So this is, this is a question. I think this guy is either a coach or something from a, from a, lower tier team it says can you describe the communication of a typical default gun round versus gun round scenario as an in-game leader what is the team communicating how you make the decisions and the, stuff like that mm, yeah obviously i don't want to say so much about our system yeah. but i believe for example as a like as an individually player for example i'm playing my position let's say on dust 2 i'm a lurker I have nothing else to do, just listening to the grenades, basically telling them grenades, repeating the grenades, also giving some information to the in-game leader. Basically, as I, if I'm B lurker, I say, hey, B is smoked right now. Now the in-game leader makes a call. Hey, the B is smoked again. B has no smokes. Hey, we can end B. They have no smoke. Yeah, that's basically one of the parts what needs to be done as a lurker, basically on the side, in my eyes. Obviously, he can also make, hey, I will do some pressure here and there. And then at some point, the in-game leader needs to also understand what he did, for example, for himself. He did some pressure there. Maybe he didn't communicate that. And then afterwards, it looks really bad. Obviously, if he's a re really good player, he communicates that. Maybe puts up a read afterwards how they handled the, uh, the pressure. And maybe he can consider doing a, whatever, an explode or something. But for me as an in-game leader, I always, for example, my call is always, we do a default. Default based on, hey, Give me some information, teammates. Obviously, if they give me all the inputs, I try to make a call around it. Obviously, if I give always my teammate the freedom to ov overcall me, if they see I'm doing a bad call, basically, let's say, hey, B guy, they, they didn't throw anything, yeah? And the B guy says, hmm, they didn't throw anything. And I, at the, at the late round, say, hey, let's do a B exec. And then he says, but they have some equipment on B. Obviously, then I need him to overcall me and say, hey, 
Are you, what are you doing there? We are not going B because it's a very bad call. We are running to a stack maybe with full equipment. So basically it's his decision to either let us show really good that we are not going B or he's he's not saying anything and, to say, and then afterwards on the chat, ah, Bot Tapson, what a guy, man. In-game leader is one of the worst in-game leader in the world. <laughs> and basically it's just, I'm depending on the guys on the server. They need to think with me. They need to live with me. And basically that's something I consider as an in-game leader, what needs to be done. I live, I, I'm the worst part of the team. I need to be the worst part. I need to always listen to my team. I need to make the right decision. Obviously I make worse decisions sometimes, like bad decisions. And that's why I'm depending on the team that we all consider or we are doing the right decision together. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right. Prof, that was a, a long, a long one there. So maybe we just leave it. Or do yeah, you have I like can, a I can also maybe give it a more, few more minutes if there okay. are more questions. I mean, the other questions that people are asking in chat as well is like uh, Eternal Fire. Um, oh, Zantaris. Oh, yeah. about Zantaris and Zantaris being the in-game leader. What are your thoughts on, maybe we can end on that. Like, what are your yeah, thoughts on, on the team and Zantaris as an in-game leader? Um, is he asking for any, any tips? <laughs> oh, not yet. But obviously, I believe that Zantaris, like he... Um, definitely, like improved as a in-game, uh, like as a person. Also, of course, as a player. Like he, before he came to big, all in his head was, how do I make an ace? Basically, like here we have full equal with Glocks, and he says, hmm, how do I get at least three kills? It's not possible sometimes. So he just needed to accept that he's depending on the team. On a good level, on a high good level, you need to have teammates who are capable of helping you, yourself, or helping the whole team, how to create maybe rounds for you, how to maybe create a good uh, tactic around something which is happening. So basically, I believe that he, will make it, he will make it right. He has the experience. He maybe copies maybe some stuff what we have. Obviously, I would also do the same if things are working right, if he thinks it's good enough, if things are... Like happen smoothly and fluently, I definitely would copy it as well. And therefore, I think he will definitely make it right. And obviously, they have a good team. They have really high hitters. They have a good opera as well, who is surprisingly very, very good. Voxic, obviously. But I think they will make it right. And so far, I don't think they lost the game yet. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they I mean, played yeah. play the Turkish, <laughs> Turkish tournament, obviously, but yeah. Going well, so at least something, yeah. But yeah, they're going to get invited true. to a bunch of stuff, so I think that uh, they're going to have a chances to have chances to show themselves for sure. Nice. Okay. Well, let's let's end it there. Taps, thank you very much for joining us. Now, at the end of the show, if you want to say anything to the fans, you want to say anything to anybody out there, you, you, this is your time. Yeah. Obviously, first of all, thank you for inviting me. It was a pleasure being here with you guys. You guys are legendary. You have a lot of um, experience in the scene, in the business, obviously. And other than that. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for having me. Thanks for all the support from the fans from Germany, from the national fans nowadays, also from Danish. And I'm um, looking forward to just show what we are capable of doing in the server and also obviously in the next few days in the boot camp still in the practice areas. And I'm looking forward for the first game against EG at the 27th. Make sure to tune in, guys, and hopefully we can surprise you. Off gets. All right, 27th, okay. everybody. That is this Friday. So don't miss it. You get to see Big in the server for the first time since the play break. Big thank you to Tabson for joining us. And, well, as usual, we've run over. We've run over time again. But uh, we're going to have another show, 31st, 2 p.m. Tune in for that. HLTV confirmed on Twitter. All that good stuff. Profit Striker, give him a wave. Goodbye, everybody. See you next time. Thanks, Tabson, again. Good night. Add some fun to your space with Extrify, designed in Sweden with focus on quality products built on experience. You're looking at Project 4, their fourth generation of products with super cool colorways to stand out, with matching sets to satisfy with a solid B4 bungee, lightweight ergonomic M4 mouse, the K4 keyboard is fantastic, all of which are performance focused, and finish it off with colorful GP4 mouse mats that are bold in design and smooth on the surface. The retro theme in particular has got the feels. Complete your setup with Extrify. No regrets. Guaranteed. These bombs go to the teammates. I want to see you fall and fast. Win the round. Win the game.
Parry Match. Your esports teammate. teammate. Stuck ranking up? Lost the motivation to grind? Bored of clicking heads on AIM maps? Get some color into your game. Bitskins.com. Buying and selling skins made easy. Tons of payment methods and instant cash outs. Just choose your dream skins, select your preferred payment method, and start grinding again. If you want to play like the pros, you've got to look like the pros. 